What's going on, everybody? And happy Spider Man weekend, Spider Man Sunday. It is a, a wonderful time to be a Spider Man fan. I'll just say that. Uh, welcome. What's going on, everybody? Happy Sunday, December 19th. We are here to discuss the movie of the year, arguably, as far as anticipation goes, as far as speculation and leaks and spoilers and this, that, and the third. And uh, the movie has come out and it is uh, uh, making a name for itself, to say the least. And we're going to be talking about this movie up and down, left, right, spoilers galore. So if you haven't seen the film, one of uh, what two, two people in the world that haven't seen it, but if you haven't seen it, we will be talking spoilers. Uh, so definitely go check it out and then come back and maybe watch this on the replay. Or if you're just walking in from seeing it for the first time, come and join the conversation. Or if you're like us and have seen it, we will be talking about this film to the upbeat degree. And I'm so excited to be here. So full spoilers for Spider Man No Way Home. But with all that being said, before we get into this awesome conversation, make sure if you all have not already to like the video, share the video, leave your thoughts, your theories, your predictions about the future. Spider-Man, uh, your favorite moments, least favorite moments, everything you can think of in the comments. And we'll try to address some of those comments and answer any questions you all may have for us all. But with all that being said, I had to uh, bring in some Avengers, had to do the Ned and, and portal some amazing people into the stream because I wasn't going to do this alone. I'm so excited to have these. Uh, you, you know these people. You've seen them on the channel before, uh, but we're talking everything Spider-Man, starting off with someone that's representing Canada, someone that I know has been talking about this film uh, all weekend and is wants to talk about it even more with us tonight. I'm so excited to hear her thoughts on this film and so much more. I'm talking about the one and only Amanda what's going on hi i'm so happy to be here happy spider-man weekend happy Amanda. spider man weekend spider mess if we're gonna be honest because <laughs> it's the week of christmas so yeah I'm, I'm stoked i'm stoked it was fantastic so man there's so much to talk about with this film from the box office to the speculations to yeah. the leaks what, what was true what was not true and then of course there's a movie at the end of the day and i think this movie uh might have stuck the landing for us all but uh it's mm -hmm. here it is finally here it's amanda here. Yeah, Can you I, believe it? I can't. I still have to pick Christmas myself. came early, right? Christmas came early this year. For sure. Song. The best present, honestly. <laughs> it was the greatest present. And we'll talk about some of those surprise gifts that we didn't know were on the tree. They were here and there. And they're like, oh, you know, okay. But Amanda, why don't you do the fine folks at home a favor? Let them know who you are, what you're mm -hmm. about, and where they can find you. Yeah, well, you guys can always find me over at AMX ND Reviews on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. I'm a film critic and entertainment journalist. I'm also a writer, editor, and social media manager for Geek Bomb. Um, I write movie reviews. It's chat about movie reviews and have these great discussions with such amazing, amazing people. And uh, you can check out my website, CanadaXCinema.com. My No Way Home review is up there. My you know, a Kingsman review uh, is out there too. It's up there. It's coming out. Probably going to get buried because of this movie that we're going to talk about today. But yeah, you guys can find me there. It's funny, Amanda. We were talking about the uh, the overshadowness of this film with stuff mm. like The Witcher season two, uh, as you mentioned, yeah. Kingsman, uh, Guillermo del Toro's Nightmare Alley. I mean, we were talking off camera. Uh, someone should have called someone and said, "Hey, you might want to push it up a week. Maybe it. push it to the beginning of of it's next month." Then. Yeah, you know, it happens. It happens. But yeah. guys, you heard Amanda. Check her out. Her links are in the bio. She writes some incredible reviews, uh, and she's just such an awesome person. So. Why not support, support an incredible person like Amanda? And of course, she's on here every single Wednesday talking Hawkeye yes. and all that Marvel stuff with us, which fun, uh, fun. we'll be talking about the finale of Hawkeye, which is just like, seriously, Marvel, can you, yeah. can you, can you let us breathe a little bit? I it's know. <laughs> it's, a, it's a wonderful time, Amanda. But yeah. our, uh, another gentleman that actually another person joins us every Wednesday representing the East Coast. Uh, I have not. We, we talked briefly after you and this next person had seen mm -hmm. the film. But now we're going to see his uh, his reactions on camera, hear his thoughts, what worked, what maybe didn't work, all that fun stuff. Talking about mm -hmm. my main man. Uh, we got two East Coasters on tonight's stream, but this one's <laughs> coming from New York. My main man, Chris from Taste Take. What's up, man? Hey. <laughs> what up? What's going on, man? What up? What up? What up? What's what going up? on? You, you, have you getting bit by the spider like us, Chris? Did the spider get you, my friend? Right in the neck. Right, right in, in the neck. neck. <laughs> it got me crazy. It yep. got me good. But we here. We are here, my friend. This movie is killing it at the box office. So many discussions to be had, and I'm just so excited to hear your thoughts, man. It's it's so much to go over in this film, Chris. So much, my friend. It's a lot. It is. It is. We're breaking it we down. made it. We made it, man. We made we, it, man. Uh, we have made it. it. After all the spoilers and speculations, we have seen the film. But hey, Chris, why don't you let the fine folks at home know who you are, what you're about, and what you got for the fine folks on the internet? What's up, internet? What's up, fine folks of YouTube? 
My name is Chris Tate. I, I run uh, Tate's Take over here on YouTube. All the information, I, I know it's there. I think you might need to update my, my Twitter thing. Last time I checked, it was my old Twitter name. But uh, it is at Tate's Take. Um, and yeah, I do movie reviews, TV show reviews, all that good stuff, documentaries, all that kind of fun stuff. So if you're into that, follow me. Subscribe to my stuff. And if you already know who we are, we got a good group here I already know. So I see some familiar faces in the chat. So let me not waste anybody's time here. We're here to talk about Peter Parker, not Chris Tate. So let's do it. <laughs> and, and a couple other Parkers and some other uh, characters to talk about tonight. I don't whoa, know. Whoa, 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 whoa,
numbers are staggering. Amanda, what was your initial prediction uh, prior to these box office numbers coming out? And as far as the numbers you're looking at on the screen now, how are, are theaters officially back? Yeah, theaters are back. Thank you, Spidey. Everyone showed up for our boy. Um, it was It's incredible. When I saw this number today, I was like, I did not expect this, especially during a pandemic, considering the numbers that we've gotten for previous films and, and people blaming the pandemic or blaming streaming and, you know, same day streaming. So yep. seeing 253, yowza, I'm in, I'm Massive. in shock, but I'm just Massive. so happy. I'm so happy that it's, it's a Spider-Man movie. Cause like, yeah. For me, Endgame was, it was good. I'm not the biggest fan of Endgame. I'm not, I'm going to be that person and say that. I'm not the biggest fan of Endgame because I prefer Infinity War. Do not facepalm. It's okay. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm happy that, you know, Spidey's up there and yeah. he's, he's going to dethrone some stuff and things. And I'm just happy about that. So this number is ridiculously good and it's going to keep yeah. climbing. And I think this is also one of the few sequels where each movie, the box office got bigger and bigger and bigger. And I don't know if this yeah. is going to surpass Far From Home with it not having the China release, but you know, Homecoming I think was like 880, uh, Far From Home was like 1.1, and now you know, obviously we'll see what this is already a half a billion um, yeah. where it's at now in the first weekend. So you know, we'll see if it'll cross uh, over Far From Home. But Chris, man, same for you. Uh, maybe a little bit of the theater experience, man. How was it a packed house with people cheering? Uh, and, and did you already buy your second ticket, fourth ticket, fifth ticket to see this film? Of course it was a packed house, obviously. Yeah. Um, it was it was crazy. It was it was crazy packed. The energy in the whole theater was crazy. I love to see when people like have their costumes and all that when they bring to the movie theaters. I love the the just the not caring about what people think. I mean, it's New York City, no matter what. Anyway, so people dress like that every day. But I love how they, they like they, people people don't 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 care, and they came as the, as themselves. I had my um I had my Miles Morales hoodie on, so I came I came correct. I had my Spider Man socks on, more subtle flex. But I my, my theater was loud. My theater was the energy was crazy. They they clapped and cheered for the fucking Nicole Kidman. So I already knew. What time it was <laughs> when we got to the uh, to the to, to the to the main event? Um, I'm not surprised about the numbers. The theaters are not back. I will say that. That's true. I think. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, I these, yeah, yeah. The, unless there's another Spider-Man coming out next week, there's not. Uh, so it's they're not back. But these numbers are great for yeah. uh, for a pandemic. They, these mm -hmm. numbers are great for yeah. a non-pandemic. And, um, you know, we knew what time it was. As soon as, you know, Fandango and all these things were crashing when we tried to get tickets, people in the, in the industry are trying to get tickets, are, are struggling to find tickets. I knew it was going to be that, kind, that type of energy. I'm very, very happy for everyone that was involved in making the film. Mm. Tough, 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 tough expectations. They exceeded all of them. Yeah. Um, I think the movie's great. I mean... It's in the same. I, I say it's like it's in the same conversation as the Infinity Wars and the End Games of the world. I, mm -hmm. I make it like a basketball conversation where it's like, I know Kobe's not the goat. Like he's not, but like he's go good book, enough. Yeah, <laughs> he's good enough to sit at the table and have a conversation sure. with, with LeBron and and uh, and Michael Jordan. And yeah. that's how I feel about Spider Man. Like yeah. to me, it's probably not the best movie that's ever been made in the MCU, especially because of the stakes of of those other two movies. Yeah, but it can sit down at the table, and that's 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 impressive, and have that conversation. Like, look, yeah, y'all got yeah, y'all did something, but I did something too. So that's that's kind of where I put it at. I'm not, yeah. I haven't ranked it and all that. I haven't done all that. I'm sure we'll talk about some of that stuff today, but I'm very very impressed with, with what was put out. So I'll put it like I'll leave it like that. Well said, man, Michael. Man, finishing off these numbers, man. As far as when you saw the film, did you have the packed house? Uh, you know, and as well as, I mean, that's a big number too. Like you, like Chris and Amanda said, even with the non-pandemic, this is bananas to see these numbers. And I guess just to wrap up the conversation too, Michael, do you think this will easily cross a billion with no issues, even without the China release? I was gonna say you could say it's a spectacular ah, number. This ah, guy, this guy. Ah. <laughs> but no, I was not expecting these type of these types of numbers because yeah. I mean, despite like even like the highest box office up to this point, we haven't seen any of these numbers this year. And then especially yeah. with like uh, Omquisha starting to uh, get higher, Omicron getting bigger and bigger with uh, COVID numbers and yeah, restrictions yeah. happening and things like that. Like 
Yeah, like yeah, and that's that's another reason why I don't think theaters are bad because like these these numbers are continuing Steam, to skyrocket, up, and skyrocket, yeah. And go, yeah. Like even in my job, like we're doing restrictions and everything like that. But anyway, yeah. like yeah, my theater was completely packed. We had cos cos even in Jersey. Like, I was like, it's cosplayers in Jersey, like so North New Jersey. Like what the hell? Like <laughs> what is going on? But yeah, like I haven't had this fun of a theater experience since Avengers Endgame. Like yeah. just the the react like e like even during the pre like people were cheering during the previews like you said uh, the Nicole Kidman people were clapping which I'm like side note why the why the, why the fuck is that Nicole Kidman commercial there like I'm in an AMC theater why are you selling me at an AMC theater like I'm like it's so stupid like play the movie but like yeah like during every moment the audience was screaming cheering laughing crying like. Yep. I, I, and I loved every single I loved every single moment of it. Like it makes yeah. me, and, and it makes me appreciate all of the theater experiences that we didn't get last year because yeah, of that was a great point. Yep. <clears throat> so, and, and that's to even I mean to that point too, Michael, in regards to when we had the conversations last year, is that are the theater experiences over? But a movie like this shows you why theaters will, you know, regardless of how things plan out with uh different variants and all this stuff, the, there's still a, a moment in history to, to experience stuff like this and have that communal experience. And this is this is definitely in the in the history books as far as mind blowing moments and just cheering and laughing and feeling like a kid again, nostalgia to the galore. So Congratulations, Marvel, Sony, John Watts, and, and everyone involved in this. Two fifty three is not a number to sneeze at, and uh, you know, almost six hundred million in, in a three day weekend is uh, is is pretty insane. And, and again, rewatchability. So billion dollars yeah. Yeah. coming up in a couple Definitely. weeks. We yeah. will see. We will see. But and this, uh, a to answer your other question, like in terms of like the box office for this movie and then even like Eternals is maybe obviously not as big in, uh, as, yeah. as uh, Spider-Man and uh, Shang-Chi. Yeah. The fact that they're still making a profit without the Chinese box office is showing that they don't yeah. need to cater so much to yeah. the Chinese yeah, box market, office, yeah. which also hey, brings me to a point because there's rumors that the reason they didn't do this character is because of China. Give me Mephisto. <laughs> oh my god! I want. I saw. I saw you roll your eyes. Give me Mephisto. <laughs> I didn't do anything. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you don't need. You don't need the Chinese box office for Mephisto. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and these movies are showing it. So, yeah, give it to me. Hey, I think Mephisto's. He'll be 2022, Mephisto's year. Uh, but listen, ladies and gentlemen, everyone in chat, let us know how many times you've seen the film. Do you plan on seeing it again? And do you think this film will be crossing a billion before the end of the year, potentially? Uh, let us know in the comments. But uh, enough of the box office talk. Let's actually have some conversations, some discussions about the actual film. I think the first topic I want to bring to you all, starting with you, Amanda, mm -hmm. we've been talking about it for the entire year, especially with covering WandaVision, Falcon Winter Soldier. Every other week, it was a Spider-Man rumor. There was a potential leak out there. There was speculation upon speculation. So my question for you first, Amanda, is knowing certain things prior to the film coming out, a la Spider-Man, Matt Murdock, potential deaths, when you actually sat down the film, did it take anything away from those experiences from you, even though you might have, spider senses, anticipated certain things that happened? Did it take anything away from you? And not condoning leaking culture, I'm just wondering if it took away your experience at all. Um, it did for Matt Murdock. Yeah. But the way that the other two were brought in, like, did, it was not ruined Didn't for me whatsoever. Yeah. Because, like, as you said, I cried the entire <laughs> third act <laughs> without stopping. I cried straight through. So, yes, um, it got to me. But Matt Murdock was the only one where I was like, oh, man, like, I really wish that wasn't shown yeah. or like they didn't confirm it just because yeah. it was in the first 20 minutes of this film and that was like the first surprise that we got yeah and then even after walking out of no way home i was like like i'm i'm so wrapped up in the other two where i even forgot that matt was in the first half of this film which also like kind of sucks because it was so small yeah. but so many things happen in this movie <clears throat> but for me it, it didn't take away for those two whatsoever matt a bit but, you know, leaks need to stop because it, it's really irritating now. Every single thing about it's like we got done with No Way Home and now it's like moved on to like multiverse of Dr. Madden. Strange leaks like, or stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> come on. Like I already saw images. I already saw images of what's like to come in multiverse of madness. And it's just very, very wrong. 
Yeah. So it's, it's tough to say that, you know, unfortunately I don't see it stopping anytime soon because I think if anything has proven, proven us, and let's be honest, Sony and leaks, I think some of that stuff is, is part of Sony's strategy to put some yeah. little things out there to create buzz. Uh, but Chris, man, I know you do, you try to do your best to, to stay off the internet, the interwebs to, for spoilers and leaks and all that. But, you know, occasionally on our live streams, we would talk about potential rumors or what have you. But I was just curious, man, did any of the rumors that you did hear prior to the film, did it take away any of the experiences for you personally? I think it's tough to even expect a Toby or Andrew leak not to happen. Yeah. I think it was, and I didn't see any leak where it was like footage of them. Right. Or I didn't see any of that. We're out there. My, we're my, out there. my level Very. was like, <laughs> They're probably in this movie. And for that, I was like, I expect that type of stuff to be leaked. And to me, not seeing them, they weren't in the trailer. Like, to me, it was fine for what I knew going in before, to the movie. I, I I probably would have had them their entrance a little more epic. The, oh, my, yeah, we'll course, talk about that. We'll, we will the, definitely the, talk about that. The crowd, of <laughs> course, is eating it because it's their, it's them. But I would have probably did it a little different, a la Civil War. But Matt Murdock, and let me get a little closer, yeah. because oh. your boy has watched at least five episodes. Okay. <gasps> oh, All right. yeah. oh, 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 oh. Hey. So, so by the time I got to by the time I got to, to Thursday, yeah. I had seen two or three, as yeah. promised. Good. So, like, as, when the stick hit the stick, the walking, whatever it's called, it's walking, yeah. yeah. The, yeah that came when that hit i was like i know that guy so i was Perfect i was able to, to barely barely <laughs> barely play along i'll see enough before the hawkeye finale so that i'll know even more kind of even at this point, yeah. i've yeah. seen king now he's on episode four i think so that was cool crazy that he doesn't show up again it's like they kind of threw him away like they just kind of added him late yeah but um yeah. Those type of things, and like just that was just like a slight rumor. Like I guess you have to be deeper into the weeds to know about like a daredevil rumor in in this yeah. kind of, this this movie. But yeah, for the for the main the main rumors, I was from my level of like outside rumors. I was like, yeah. Yeah, I understand. This is fine. Hmm. Gotcha, Michael Mans, and and just you know, uh, you you're not only a comic book reader, so you have that knowledge of maybe where plots are going out to, but you you know you have your own TikToks. You make a lot of predictions on stuff. Did did that, that culture of leaking? damper your experience at all man in regards to either the murdoch conversation spider-man conversation potential story i mean the story of the film on on reddit the film was out there for months did it take away any of your experiences from this film man? honestly for me uh not really because Good. it's Good. one thing to know things lowercase no yeah. and it's another thing entirely to capital no things so like yeah. yes for the most part and this is and this is one of my biggest criticisms regarding the movie and but it's more so the outside stuff like basically every single thing that happened in this movie like i wasn't really surprised mm -hmm. but still in the way it was executed and just the experience in, of itself i still loved every single moment of it but mm -hmm. i couldn't help think to myself after i saw the movie and i was talking to this with my friend that i went with uh how much better it would have been and could have been had I known absolutely nothing. Like I go back yeah. and think about the Mandalorian and Luke Skywalker showing up yes. and how yep. nobody yep. knew that was going to happen yep. and yep. how the entire internet and the world and blew up. Yeah. Erupted. Yep. Yep. Cause they're like, yep. what? And like, yep. so I imagine, mm -hmm. I, I just think about how awesome it would have been if we knew, like, just knew nothing. Mm -hmm. But yeah. at the same time. No, of course, of course, of course, true. of course. Yeah. And like, how yeah. hard would that be? Yeah. I mean. They used to do it back in the day. They used to. <laughs> and believe me not, there's someone out there, there's probably hundreds of thousands of people that have not, didn't, don't know. Based on my crowd, right? there's a good amount of people in good... my crowd who did not know. Okay, that's what like, I'm saying. There, there, was, a, there, there was a black girl in there like. They from the other movies. I love this shit. Like, <laughs> what? No, well, like, you, you also have to realize, like, I get it. Like, I get yeah, it. I get. I get to uh, Chris's point. Like, we're we're also content creators, so we exactly. are doing yeah. we're doing yeah. this stuff. Some yeah. of us for a living, some of us for fun. Hopefully, all of us for a living one day. But like, so we're inundated in the news and the Twitter yeah. culture and everything yeah. like that. But yeah, somebody mm -hmm. like my brother. He has absolutely no idea that Toby and Andrew, like he doesn't know the leaks and the news and everything like that. Like, and my brother doesn't like, my brother 
doesn't care about spoilers. So the moment yeah. I told him I saw it, he was like, he was like, what was the movie about? Da, da, da. Is Toby and Andrew in it? And I mean, I told him because he like, whatever. Yeah. But yeah. he was like, oh, for real? Like, oh, I, are you joking? <laughs> yeah, no. like, so yeah. yeah, he doesn't know all the news and nerd culture. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, for the average audience member, they're yeah. not going to know anything about the least because they're not playing, yeah. paying attention. But yep. so, yep. yeah, so I think that also helped because, yeah, like you had those type of people that were going to see the, uh, the movie experience. And so their reaction helped fester and garner your excitement and everything like that but yeah i do still yeah. wonder like i wish i had the, the that experience not, yeah the experience of not yeah. knowing 100 percent agree and, and you said something too michael uh when you were breaking that down for me personally i don't welcome uh spoiler culture but it doesn't it doesn't kill my vibe like i know with some people it like destroys their year when they learn certain <laughs> things and i get it yeah. you know some you grow up with these characters you love these characters you waited for this moment to be shown and, and when people spoil it 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 sucks but for me i think you said it michael even if i read something or even see an image it all boils down to the execution because you yeah. can read something it's, that sounds stupid or that sounds cool but when you actually see it in motion see it how it plays into the context of the film where it is in a film it can it, it just kind of almost makes you forget oh yeah i knew this was yeah. coming because they executed it so well so like you also when, yeah. um not to interrupt but i remember like no, this is like way before i was doing any kind of content anything and it was dark knight rises and for some reason, I had missed the early wave of watching this movie of yeah, like yeah. the first weekend, which I knew I normally, even as a non content creator, was watching it quickly. But I remember all my whole classmates, they came out and they're like, yo, the movie's fire, da da da. And I'm like, chill. And then they were like, yo, but how about like Robin showing up? And I was like, Jesus, motherfucker. <laughs> so I'm watching the movie, like, no. what the, the fuck is Robin? Robin? Like, where's Robin? Robin? <laughs> <laughs> to your point, to your point. And then how yeah. they ended up, how they flipped it. And I said, oh, that's fire. So like, I didn't want to hear that, but. To your point, the execution. I was like, yeah. okay, yeah, I get it. Yep, yeah. it played. Yep, and and also to uh, you know this comment here, I will say uh, even with our knowledge of the certain knowledge of the film, that I'm I'm still shocked that Sony did not show Toby. And, and don't get me wrong, by this probably next tomorrow, <laughs> TV yeah. spots are gonna yeah, probably, probably have one hundred percent. We're getting a poster. Yeah. We're getting yeah. Funkos. We're getting yeah. a trailer. Yeah. Like that's a couple more days. Couple Foggy days. was probably they like, you better, on. you better, you better not. <laughs> <laughs> We'll I mean, see even, them even on the, even Jimmy the UK trailer. What, what was it? The Russian, tra the whatever trailer that showed the lizard getting punched. With the kick. I was yes. like, why would you even show that? Like, uh, yep. like you didn't no even one try. Edit that out. <laughs> like we got the magnifying glass. Really, like, guys, look what we see. It's like <laughs> that was yeah. such a blatant. Like, okay, he's not. The wind's not that strong in New York, but yeah, no. Yeah, it's uh, the leak. It, it is weird, and again, like Amanda said, Doctor Strange is in May, right? So we're five months away from that film, yeah. which is crazy. I didn't realize. Which is I crazy. Was like, Wait, yeah, I thought it was like March or something. Oh, like, Batman they, pushed that bad boy yeah. back. They they saw that Batman second trailer. Like, oh yeah, yeah, we're yeah, ready. Like, yeah, we're yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get yeah, that one. That, that, that first trailer got him shit. Yeah, open. yeah. So I mean, hopefully, I I think the spoiler because I think if it let to be honest with you, I think Spider Man No Way Home was the most leaks I've ever seen for a film. Uh, I don't yes. think I've ever Ever seen this much leakage for any Crazy. movie so hopefully it's just a sony thing and, and movie, you know dr strange would be okay uh if not he could put a spell on everyone before the film comes out to figure yeah, i hope so leaks i hope so there. too <laughs> but uh you know great conversation there again let us know in the chat for those watching this live or watching the replay how you all felt about you know maybe any prior knowledge you all had and if your experiences may be dampered by anything you might have seen or heard or whatever the case may be but getting into this film opening up the movie one of the things i really appreciated was um Pick it up immediately after Far From Home. I don't think mm -hmm. we've really gotten that in an MCU film. I think the closest we got to that was maybe, you know, Thor Ragnarok had the post credit scene from that, which led right into the opening of Infinity War. But no film has really, like, picked up after the next one. So, uh, Amanda, starting off the film with, uh, you know, my man getting out and out and then Peter Parker's reveal and... You talk about cancel culture in an MCU film when the girl's like, Spider-Man hit me. <laughs> They're like trying to cancel Spider-Man ASAP yeah. and him yeah. saving Mary Jane and going through New York. Consequences are far from home. How did you like the opening, Amanda? Uh, it was fast paced. It felt yeah. really eerie Jumped too. Right with them. It. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then the way they did with the, the VO and you just heard everything from far from home with Mysterio, like you heard all of that ahead of time. Um, just to set the tone of the film from the very beginning is like shit's gonna get real right now <laughs> and he's gonna be in the middle of it so um it was a really fun opening i really enjoyed it you get him like in the middle of the people and i feel like it, not that you didn't see enough of him with the people because like watching back like the first spider-man or the second spider-man like toby Maguire spider-man was always like connecting with 
the community and connecting mm-hmm. with the people in the city. Yeah, Whereas I yeah. feel like Tom has <clears throat> kind of been out of it's that. Literally you know? was missing in New York in the entire second film. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, it, 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 I don't know. It just felt different. It's like yeah. now the people know yep. who you are. Yep. They're going to talk to you, fam. Like, they're going to be yeah. in your face about it. So I thought that was a really nice touch. But, like, the camera work for this opening scene, like, yeah. it was just a lot of fun to see him flying everywhere. When he took the subway, it was just yep. – it was great stuff. And it was really engaging. And, you know, they did a great job with it, I think. Michael, your thoughts on this opening, man? Again, the, the consequences from Far From Home. Because for me personally, Homecoming, which we'll talk about ratings at the, later on, but Homecoming mm-hmm. to Far From Home wasn't as connective as as, as narratively speaking because I felt like yeah. Far From Home, Peter Parker was more Infinity War in-game Peter Parker than he was from his own previous film. So being able to go from Far From Home to Homecoming to me was more cohesive and had a little bit more synergy to it. So. Yeah. Thoughts the same, Michael, or did you not not the biggest fan of the opening there? I know I love the opening, and yeah. I, I also love that this movie wasted no time. Like Damn, jump right into it, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's <clears throat> like the, this movie hit the ground running, yeah. And uh, going back to my comparison to like Endgame and Infinity War, like it reminded me of Avengers: Infinity War, where you saw yep. where you heard it's the peaking. voiceover, yep. mm-hmm. yeah. Of, uh, of the uh, Asgardians calling for help before you saw the ship being destroyed and Thanos showed up. It's like, oh, like we're 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 really starting. Like, <laughs> and so like yeah, I thought it, I thought it gave like uh, Amanda said like an eerie feeling, an eerie quality to the open that made you like automatically sit up and pay attention to what's <clears throat> what's going on. And and mm-hmm. yeah, I, I loved it. It was it was it was great. Chris, man, any any uh, same sentiments or any critiques? I do have one critique that I'll mention about the opening, but any uh, any thoughts on the opening, my friend? I thought the opening was fine, and I know that they released it somewhere, not like leaked, but like released yeah. the, the screen. Yeah. 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 yeah, and I didn't watch that, so I figured it wouldn't be anything life changing because they already released it. Yeah. Um, but I, I like to Mike's point, I, I do appreciate any movie that just starts and just goes. So I was cool. With, I was cool with it. No, I agree. Like the only critique, and it's more so within this first half, because um, as we kind of move on, he goes to Aunt May's house. We find out that uh, Aunt May and uh, Happy have uh, the fun okay. is over. Yeah, the fling is over, Happy. Uh, mm-hmm. But you know, they go to the apartment. He's, he's not happy anymore. He's not happy uh-huh. anymore. Uh-huh. Good, Michael. With That's the, number two, Michael. <laughs> We're we taking <laughs> But the the apartment the Department of Damage Control comes in, puts them in custody, and obviously we're going to get to this big moment here. But the only thing I wish would have happened a little bit more, I wanted a little bit more of the consequences was in within his knowledge or his his um his name being out there. Like I think of Scorpion, for example, from Homecoming. You know, not know wanting to know the identity of a Spider Man. I would have think that you know some villains would have came after him after that mm-hmm. big reveal. But you know, we'll get to that a little bit later. But the big moment here, as Chris alluded to, with uh, a particular good lawyer, hell of a lawyer, uh, Amanda. We, yeah. we we saw it coming, but again, it all comes down to execution. We see the cane. He's in the living room, and this and going back to potential things of actors saying this mm-hmm. was the scene that Tom Holland was talking about months ago when he was talking about there's a, a scene in a, in a living room and and all that different stuff, and this was the scene, and we got the man. Matt Murdock coming yeah. to help out Peter Parker. Your thoughts on Mr. Matt Murdock officially in the MCU, Amanda? Woot woot. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. I thought it was a great scene. I'm really happy that um, he didn't come in like the interrogation room. I think that um, it would have felt like impersonal. Like why would Matt be called to the, uh, you know, to go down to the, oh my God. Oh my God, to the police station in that case. I don't know why I can't talk tonight. Um, But yeah, like I felt like it was more intimate that Matt knew his circumstances as a superhero, like in just the duality of that. I thought it was really nice to have him just like sit there. Um, But yeah, like half my theater knew who he was. Yeah. The other half had no idea who the hell he was. So I was just sitting there with my with my best friend and my cousin. So I had to like lean over. I was like to my best friend, that's Charlie Cox, who plays Daredevil in the Netflix show, which you have to Mm. watch. And then I had to lean over and I'm like, oh, my God, can you believe we're seeing Daredevil? Like It was just like the weirdest thing ever to kind of do that. And I saw that with the audience. But it was great. I think I was just so happy to see him that I didn't even listen to what was being said. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to go back and watch it and actually pay attention. But like the brick coming through the window, mm-hmm. him catching it, he's already daredevil in this universe, which is great. It's not just yep. Matt Murdock. And 
he's you know he's into his own so it was really yeah. cool to have that and to know that they know each other and to have that connect so and like and someone said in the comments earlier the, the fact that we got this guy in mm -hmm. uh you know matt murdoch in the same week is yeah. just marvel uh you're doing your damn thing so chris yeah. man you've been watching daredevil you said you about five episodes in you, you, you're officially uh, what i can only that, that has to be so cool this point. i would say yeah, you know all the yeah you, you already know the <laughs> all the plots but <laughs> Seeing that character, you know, in this uh, in this movie, you know, small cameo, but it, like Amanda said, it alludes to more to come. Uh, but your thoughts on Mr. Matt Murdock, uh, who's a really good lawyer, making his way into the MCU? Yeah, really quick. I thought it was cool that they added him so quickly to the movie. Like the movie had just started and he was already in there. So I was like, yep. okay, we yep. really getting some things this movie. So they, they get in and, and getting out. Yep. I was very surprised <clears throat> that he didn't come back in the movie or didn't have anything more to do in the movie. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, for me, I was like, man, thank God I started watching this shit. Like I would have recognized him and been like, okay, that might be the guy. For That's the guy that we've been talking about for <laughs> yeah. weeks. Like here he is. <laughs> but um, yeah. but, it, but it, was, it was much, much cooler to have, actually get a couple under my belt to see it. But um it's good it's good and it's and, it's, and it ties in perfectly with like the, what we're seeing from hawkeye so yeah very cool which i mean michael man toss into you in regards to is it possible that this gentleman is going to come on hawkeye on wednesday but even on a side note with it being a daredevil mcu or to say marvel netflix series on the do docket do you think this man will be coming into the MCU sooner than later? Will he is going to get his own movie? Is it going to be another season? Just your thoughts on what Daredevil is going to mean to the MCU moving forward. I don't think he's going to show up in Hawkeye, but I will say, mm -hmm. like, this makes me more excited about seeing next week's episode of Hawkeye, especially with the mm -hmm. drops. Spoilers for the with Kingpin, Vincent D'Onofrio showing up. I'm just like, oh, man. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I definitely, like, after Kevin Feige came out and was like, hey, yeah, we're going to confirm that we're going to – Charlie Cox is going to be yeah, Daredevil yeah. if you see Daredevil again. I was like, okay, he's saying he's this coming. right before the premiere for Spider-Man No Way Home. That like, right there yeah. tells me – And Kevin never movie. does that, by the way. Yeah, Kevin no, Feige he never, never does, does that. that. So I was he's like, saying me, Pascal's fault. <laughs> so she's just drag, yeah, uh, pinching him, like, just let it out. Just the whole yeah, time yeah. I was like, why would he do that now? I'm like, because it's probably because the premiere is next week. And I mean, he's probably going to be on the red carpet because he's in the movie, but he wasn't on the red carpet, but he was yeah. in the movie. So I was mm -hmm. like, yeah, duh. But like, I definitely feel like introducing him in this movie definitely means we're going to get more from him sooner rather than later. Where? Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Maybe he might show up. I might be wrong. He might show up at the end of next week or whatever. But he's. De I, I definitely feel like, because I'm not sure when the Echo show is going to drop, but I definitely yeah. feel like right. he's going to play a role in that show, especially with Kingpin being a presence more than likely. So I'm just yeah, curious yeah. to see, I'm just curious to see where he shows up, if he's just going to show up as a side character, if he's going to get his own, I guess, season four-esque again, or right. if it's even the same Matt Murdock from the Netflix show. Or yeah, is I don't it think a, it or, is. Yeah, or is it a variant? <laughs> yeah. So Yeah, no, I think uh, to answer, to, to I personally think, I think that this is a variant. This is a separate universe. They're separating yeah. themselves from the Netflix stuff. It will be interesting to see, like, how will they, you know, are we going to get, we're not going to get an origin. It's going to probably be very Spider Man home or uh, Civil War. He's already going to mm -hmm. be like a man that said Daredevil. And it'll be really interesting to see how they play into all that. But only, and this isn't even a critique, but my only like fandom, you know, wish uh, hat uh, thing that I wish I would have saw that moment because a man had talked about. You know, seeing him uh, maybe uh, further in the film, but I would have thought that would have been cool to have seen who recommended Matt Murdock as his lawyer. And I thought that would have been a perfect way to introduce people have been mentioning She Hulk. I thought it would have been great to have Jennifer Walters, Peter Parker yeah. looking for a lawyer, goes to the office. I can't work with you right now, kid, but here's a suggestion Matt Murdock. It would have been a great way to kind of kill two birds with one stone, introduce She Hulk in this obviously big movie now and get people excited for a show. And then obviously showing there's some canon between She Hulk and yeah. Daredevil. And I would have thought that would have been cool, but hey. Yeah, you know, that's that's my cut of that scene. It's it's um, in the director's cut. It's in the director's cut. Cut all that that flash uh, flash stuff off because flash is just terrible in these films. Get all I the cannot. book stuff out and yeah, give me yeah, uh, that hate, scene yeah. there. Okay. I don't that's know what the hell hashtag, they're doing with flash. Hashtag not my flash. <laughs> I don't know what they're doing with that kid. And he's a great actor too, but man, they do not know yes. what to do with him yeah. at all. But. Again, guys, let us know your thoughts on Daredevil. Where do you hope to see him next? Maybe Wednesday, maybe She-Hulk, maybe his own movie or show. And also, too, I don't want to leave out this little Easter egg. For my uh, Ben Affleck Daredevil fans, 
Mm. His best friend Foggy was All played by <laughs> John Favreau, <Yeah. laughs> and John it's Favreau true. happened to be in the same scene uh, yeah. as a different character, obviously. So a nice little, nice little tie together. It's, it's all, it's all connected, all one universe. But uh, <laughs> moving on as he clears the charges, which again, I wish it was a little bit more, uh, more mm. court stuff with that. But yeah, you, we can't get everything we wanted. But Peter decides to. At this point, because his life is in shambles, you know, Mary, not only is it affecting his life, him being, uh, you know, called out of Spider Man, but it's affecting Aunt May and obviously his uh, his girlfriend with uh, MJ and obviously his best friend and Ned. So he comes up with the idea to, uh, you know, go to a doctor that he knows, uh, a doctor that knows some spells. And he meets Doctor Strange, and, and a man is starting with you first. You know, a lot of us thought, oh, is it the evil Doctor or Supreme Strange from what if? He's acting a little weird in the trailers, but no, he just wants to help out the kid uh, as Wong, yeah. who, uh, who I guess we could announce him as a, officially Woo. the new source of Supreme, uh, warns him of this. But uh, your thoughts, Amanda, on seeing Peter go to Strange, uh, and even before that, just the consequences and, and, and the story plot of showing Peter's uh responsibility to try to clear his name but also his friend's name at this moment in the film he you just see that he wants to help everyone he wants to help yeah. his loved ones everyone that you know is around him and he takes it upon himself which is what a hero would do um so i i think him going to strange was a choice um considering that like yeah they did fight in space and they were together um in infinity war for that um, but it was just funny to have their banter. I think yeah. in this case in particular, Dr. Strange did not overpower Peter, whereas I feel like Tony Stark <sighs> did overpower him. Mysterio also overpowered him in his own movie. Sure. Um, so in this case, I felt like Dr. Strange and, and Spider-Man were on par with each other. They were on even ground and I felt like their, their conversations were more balanced and he wasn't like condescending saying that you don't know how to do anything. It's more of like sure. an open conversation between the two of them. Yeah. Um, so I really love that. And, you know, just like quips and jokes some of them didn't land some were cheesy whatever <laughs> but wong is like the mvp for dr strange at this point because he's just so right about everything he's like i'm gonna get out of here you're just gonna ruin things i don't want to know type of thing but yeah him being like sorcerer supreme as well supreme yeah <clears throat> was just it makes sense like strange was gone for yeah. five years like mm -hmm. of course he's gonna Next be there so even that power balance like to come into play for multiverse of madness like that's gonna be that. really fun yeah. too mm -hmm. so yeah that whole sequence i i really enjoyed it um and we got to see some more magic which is yeah. always fun. We get to Magic see his powers, fun. right? Yeah. I will uh, rebuttal on Doctor Strange a little bit later, Amanda, because I I'm not, and then we're both. I don't think we're the the biggest Doctor Strange fans in general, right? Yeah. But I'm not. I'm even more of a less of a Doctor Strange fan after this film, and I'll get into my reasons why in a little oh, bit. But uh, Michael, dun, dun, we, dun. we got Wong, <laughs> he's the new source of Supreme Man, which I, I guess I'm still confused on. I understand why he was in the post credit scene of Chung Chi because now mm. he has to explore. Okay, these mystical rings, what can it do to to our our world? But I still don't know why he's fighting Abomination if he's the the new source of Supreme. Like, don't you get more fish to fry? I guess, but I guess he got bills to pay. He still I got guess some he bills got, to pay. He's sparring with uh, Abomination on his free time. But your that's thoughts, like Michael? That's like to say Toronto light bill ain't cheap. I, I guess. Especially, and also especially, too, especially why in New it, York. <laughs> why is there snow in the Sanctum? Don't they know magic? Can't they just make the snow disappear, I guess? But uh, I guess power has to be used elsewhere. But, <laughs> Michael, your thoughts it's on... Ma it's magic snow. They can't. It's magic yeah. snow, I guess. Yeah. You gotta, yeah. But <laughs> seeing Mary Jane, Ned get into the mix, Peter try to clear their name, and then seeing him go to Strange, uh, your thoughts on how all that played out. Before we get to this goofy-ass spell. Uh, I thought it was a it was a nice scene. I like the chemistry between uh, Tom Holland and uh, Benedict Cumberbatch, and also like this this kind of tickles my nerd sense a little bit because like Doctor Strange and Spider Man are two of my favorite characters in comics, mm -hmm. and so every time they interact with each other, like whether like getting uh, P Peter needs help to deal with like his spider totem stuff and everything, like I love just how out of his element Peter Parker is with regards to like magic mm -hmm. and him being a science kid. And even though they kind of don't really do that dynamic in the MCU, I still love to see these two characters from opposite worlds interacting with each other. Um, the whole Wong being Sorcerer Supreme thing, I it makes a lot of sense, but at the same time within the crap, like within the way they're doing the story, I'm like, it still doesn't make sense because even though the time stone isn't in the uh, eye of Agamotto, 
Strange is still wearing it. Like, shouldn't Wong yeah. be wear, shouldn't Wong be wearing it? Like, maybe he doesn't want to give it to him. Right, he doesn't want to give it up. Right. <laughs> Like it, it right, you to take this off Monday. They're fighting for it. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't make sense. And they even jump into like multiverse of madness. It still seems like Strange is the source of Supreme because he's the one that's doing everything. Mm-hmm. Right now, obviously, I don't know the story, but I'm just like, you're the source of Supreme. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. But <laughs> yeah, like, but I, I still, I, I still appreciate it and like, like the scene. And I'm like, why, why are you, why are you disappearing? Like, you're, you're going off to Shang Chi when he's to performing fight. this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't make, it didn't make sense, but. Whatever. <laughs> and even you saying that too, with him being the Sorcerer Supreme, I'm just going back to Thor Ragnarok, where where Doctor Strange pulled in Thor and Loki because whenever there's any visitors on Earth, that's the Sorcerer Supreme job is to correct that you know uh, you know whatever that visitor is. So I'm like, wouldn't wouldn't Wong have been in the final fight sequence? That, or I, yeah, or, I didn't I didn't want to jump to that, out, but I was like, yeah, like the whole yeah. multiverse is collapsing. Wong, where you this at? This is your like, job. Yeah. <laughs> They, they couldn't pay him enough for the they rest of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah this is just little critiques. It didn't like it didn't bother me, but I'm just like, ah, oh, that, that. Yeah, yeah, no, they that, didn't like. Yeah, affect was, my grade. Yeah, it's just like, things oh, that we nerd out about. Wong and, didn't and show up. About. Fuck this exactly. movie. No, it was just like. What <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, so also to you, Chris. Just your thoughts on again seeing how Peter is just is not about him. He wants to clear his friend's name. Who at this point in the film they can't get into college because of the controversy surrounding him. And obviously Peter decided to go to uh, Doctor Strange and uh, get some help. Yeah, I I'm cool with. I love the Strange scenes too, like Mike. But like this is where like the movie like like kind of pales to infinity war and end game like the stakes are just so much higher like this movie's fire is five stars no matter what no problem but like i was watching this like this this is nigga cares so much about going to school like you are a literal superhero and you're talking about not getting into mit where it's those be, students wait, wait, education wait, wait, is wait, important wait, 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 bro wait, wait, like what peter are you parker. talking about this is this not is like peter the parker. peter parker it's geometry no, we're not, genius we're, we're, but we're not talking about Peter Parker, who was like an, an animated show and was delivering pizzas and he couldn't afford anything. We're talking yeah. about Peter Parker, who who wearing a Tony Stark suit, going got, to space. Who, who, everybody Thanos. knows who you are. Like well, yeah. you're you're not the the kid, the scrawny kid that like people are bullying. Like I was like, you care so much about college, and you're willing to do all of this. Yes. For, to be fair, it was also MJ and Ned yeah, in their MJ future. They wanted bad. to go to school together. Ned, I'm like, wait, what? No. But no, no he even said what? in the conversation, he's like, it's not yeah. about me. It's yeah. the consequences yeah. that my yeah. friends yeah. are yeah. facing. That's, because that, that, that's that was, like, I was on the same wave. I was like, what? why would they even care? Like, we're not doing school anymore. Like, but we're, they're not going to get paid for school. this, though. And what happened when y'all tried to go on a, on a school field trip? What but they need y'all, y'all just wanted to go on a field trip. You had to fight Mysterio in the they, clouds. Like, Tony Stark is, is gone. Being a superhero. Yeah. Is like, like, exactly. As we've seen the whole year, then it doesn't pay the bills. Exactly. Probably well, yeah. can't even get a bank yeah. loan. Like, can't get not telling me that. This dude. This is a crazy comparison. This dude was this dude's name, Kyle Rittenhorst, the murderer. He can't even go to school because he he's on the just on the news for killing niggas. Like, and he and he wants to go to school and he cannot. You're telling me that Peter Parker thinks he can enroll in a college and go to class and like like he went to school that night in the day and, and all the kids is are it, filming him. Like, like, how are you? How are you ever learning yeah, so, anything? Yeah. <laughs> you walk into your campus and everybody filming like you're not doing any of that. You're not even a celebrity. You're a god. Like you're not doing anything. Yeah. So I was like, you're, that's, that's and, and then Doctor Strange, like, and what in what world? And that's why we always thought Doctor Strange was acting a little crazy because like, in what world is this dude who was a physician is going to say, "All right, Peter Parker, I'll try it for you." Like, even that's why one was like. Y'all on your own. This is fucking right. Crazy. Don't keep me out of this, right? Which again, and is I, like, and, well, yeah. <clears throat> in every movie, you have the suspension of belief. Yes, I yeah. get it. And this, Man to gets me, bit this by one, a this, spider. Yeah, this. Well, even even that's believable because it's like, okay, it's a movie. Like that could possibly happen. No problem. Yeah. It's genetically enhanced. Of course, and I believe that this can happen. But I cannot <laughs> believe that a kid who fights aliens wants to go to class. What's he gonna do I'll, for the rest of his life? He, he wants he, to he learn. Be, He's he gonna fight crime. Be. Yeah, but he also wants to learn. Yeah, he, he can Peter beat Parker is a, people. One, one, a genius. Like he made his suit and far from he home. Wants like he wants, he wants to educate. Yeah, geometry. I know geometry. geometry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It paid yeah. off. It if paid he didn't off, know Chris. geometry. He, he wouldn't, wouldn't have done that. Doctor Doctor we're gonna talk about beating Doctor Strange, which is completely ridiculous. But we'll get to that. But and also like. uh 
That, that's why I asked, is, isn't MIT a private university? Because there are plenty of celebrities or celebrities' kids that go to private schools mm -hmm. and they're still getting their pictures like, oh, I know Jamie Foxx's son. Like, da, da, da. But yeah. the public doesn't yeah, have Jamie access Fox's to Jamie Foxx's son is still Jamie Foxx's son. It ain't Jamie Foxx. <laughs> no, but I'm just using that as an example. As an example. I mean, yeah, I guess, I guess. Kim, Kim Kardashian's going to law school. <laughs> yeah, yeah, going to law school. Yeah, Kim Kardashian going to law school. Is, is Kim Kardashian going to, and sitting down in lecture halls with with a common name? Maybe. maybe. Yeah. Kobe. Kobe. I don't okay. know. I'm not out. in the like lecture hall. <laughs> yeah, Kobe was a, he, what, this is a kid. He was not an NBA player. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you, man. It's, well, go ahead, Mike. I was going to say, but also really quick, and I wanted to address something else about, uh, that uh, Chris said, and then also I saw it in the chat, too, that they thought it was weird for Doctor Strange to help Peter. I don't. Mostly because, I like, do. Go, well, go ahead, Mike. Because, like, go, go back to uh, What If, which is canon mm -hmm. to the MCU, where uh, when Doctor Strange was against the other Doctor Strange, and it was like, your arrogance to want to fix everything is why we're in this problem as it is. So, A, yeah. you have the fact that he feels like he owes Peter Parker because he saved him from mm -hmm. uh, the, the the wizard guy. I can't think of his name, but from uh, Infinity Squidward. War. Squidward. Yeah. Yeah, Squidward. Yeah, Squidward. So, he feels right like now. he yeah. owes he feels like he feels owes him a debt because he saved his life. And then also, like, you think about this spell, like, think about even before in Doctor Strange 1. Again, I'm not a big fan of the MCU version of Doctor Strange, but, like, mm -hmm. a big reason that he wanted to pick or he picked a lot of the complicated surgeries and everything like that is because he wanted to make a name for himself. And then also, he thought, yeah. yeah, then also yeah. it was complicated. He's like, oh, I think I can, I can, I, I, I can, can do, do this. It. So yeah, you. so like the complication of like, oh yeah, why well, <laughs> memories? It's like, oh, this is, this is something I've never done before. And then yeah. I feel like this is something I can do. My ego is driving me to do it. And then plus it's my friend. So I don't think it was, and then also you get to the consequences of like, what if, and him trying to, he he know he he just knows that he could bring his girlfriend back regardless of being warned and everything like that. So I don't think it was strange pun strange. For him to help him. Yeah. Uh, three. <laughs> three. Oh, fire, yeah. 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 You you be taking shots while you do this, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think it was uh, out of the ordinary for him to help Peter. Peter. Well, let, let's let's go into the conversation to to bounce off that, Amanda. How did yeah. you so? How, yeah, I'll, I'll share my thoughts a little bit. But how did you feel about Strange helping him out? As Michael said, they've saved the world together. He feels bad for the kid, um, and he decides to help him out. And I think they even said in the movie, their their angle of the film was, hey, didn't we do this at some party uh, with the other wizards to have them forget some spell that we did, and there was no catastrophic issues with it. So you felt it was like a child's play thing. And I do have an issue with superheroes. It's very Wanda where you can just wipe the memories of people without them, you know, their permission per se, Mr. Strange. But hey, you know, they got to, he's helping a, a brother out. But Amanda, your thoughts on the spell. And if it was, uh, did you enjoy the, that this was the reason? And again, Peter messing up the spell. How did you feel about that whole thing? And we saw in the trailer, but how did you feel about it? I mean, I, it it's the story it was it's the story, it's the story. like for me it was like it's yeah. i guess this is what's gonna happen this was gonna break everything this was gonna get everyone here whatever right, right. whatever you're going to get green goblin here faster i was <laughs> i was like let's go because i'm waiting it, i'm not saying like it dragged on like we have it's, sure. it's the for way sure. that it you know it unfolded in this way um yeah. again like i really love benedict's chemistry with tom in this scene like it's yeah. the constant like they just didn't shut up they were both talking at each other and it was like ruining the spell and all of that so i felt like it was like just dr strange being yeah i'm gonna do this for you like very nonchalant like this is the way it's gonna go but just let me do it without um, getting involved and yeah. ruining this thing. And I thought that something bigger was going to happen in that moment Same. because Same. when he contained it, I was like, oh, okay. So it's that Dude. easy. Like that's not going to happen. That's fine. Yeah. So I was already like thinking like, well, how is everyone going to come here if he contained that and all of that? So I guess there was more to the spell than meets the eye at this point. Um, yeah. But yeah, I was like kind of not disappointed, but it was like underwhelmed that that's, the route that they the catalyst that they yeah, yeah it was yeah. just just that but it was, it was it we happened. talked about it when we saw the trailer like there has to be more to that right either it was yeah. supreme strange he was doing that to get some type of powers mm -hmm. uh there has to be something else but i mean like you said man it was the story 
Chris, yeah. is it? I know you had your issues with Peter going to him just to cast a spell, but just in particularly the spell and how it all starts is it kicks open the multiverse. Is Peter, which <laughs> I don't mean to nitpick, but we have two, as Michael said, two smart, intelligent individuals in the room. I found it very hard to believe that Doctor Strange didn't give him all the details of the spell before them actually doing the spell. I would have thought that would have been uh, a conversation to be had up front, but you know, mm -hmm. your thoughts on the spell, my friend. Did it bother you at all? You just like, you know what? Eating the popcorn, let's go. Well, it was nachos, first of all. But <laughs> gotcha. No, I, I felt the same way as Amanda. I was like, okay, this is what it's going to take, okay? I, I, it's weird to me that that Strange would oblige to this child, um, especially the whole time we've seen Strange interact with, with, with Peter. It's just like, you're a child. Like, why, why would I ever take, not even take, like, take orders or, like, listen to your suggestions? Um, and then Wong is your boy. Like, like Wong would, would tell you no, and then you should be like, yeah. no, not like you wouldn't listen to the kid. Cause like the kid follows iron and you don't even like iron. So it's like, <laughs> I don't get how he would get to that level, but I was willing to look past all of it. Cause <clears throat> I understood that this is the, the motive of where the movie was going. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. Uh, and Michael, cause you, you know, you open up the conversation with the spell and, and just to wrap it up, man, just overall, you're okay with how things played out as far as that spell being the, the catalyst of the multiverse being open. I mean, magic. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. yeah like, I mean, and there's a thing, like they say, there's, a, there's, a, I go back to Buffy the Vampire Slayer, a quote from Spike. There's a thing about magic. There's always consequences, no matter what yeah. you do. Like, so yeah. Peter, like, and then also, uh, not even just that, but like, because I keep going back to it, like the ego of Doctor Strange would not allow him not to help. Yeah, I can Peter do it. Park, I can yeah. handle it. This is going to yeah. be easy. And, then, and, then, like, be and like easy. they said uh, earlier, like, yeah, we've done the spell already. He wasn't expecting Peter to fuck Mess it up. up. Yeah. yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And now I will say to concede, I do agree that Strange should have been a little bit more, especially being a yeah. you know, <laughs> being a surgeon. It's like, hey, here's something. Hey, Don't talk. <laughs> yeah, with the things about the spell, and everybody's gonna forget. Are yeah. you sure you want to go through that? Yada yada yada. Yes, Michael. Yes. Yeah. So I yeah, I do feel like that should have been that, but it if wouldn't they have, did have that conversation. Exactly. There's no I know, stuff, like. I know, I know. <laughs> That yeah. so my bit, and this goes into my Doctor Strange conversation that we'll kind of dive into a little bit. I just sometimes when films just um a character like Doctor Strange, like Chris said, I think is more intelligent than that. But to to get on the level mm -hmm. of like they had to level down the character intelligent wise and power wise to in in order to yeah. make the script better. I don't like when films do that. There's a lot in MCU in general, there's a lot of power scaling where, where characters are weaker in one movie, stronger in this movie. It's very frustrating, but it's the MCU. And like you said, you, you got to suspend your disbelief and just go on with the journey, you know? I, but, definitely, I definitely agree with that. Like, yeah. as, as, as much as they nerfed the Hulk, like, I'm still not over that. Like, Hulk yeah. is, I, I'm done with the Hulk at this point. Same. He's not even the Hulk. He's Bruce Banner. <laughs> we're going, we're call him Bruce. I don't like him. Bruce. I don't like what Bruce. they've done to him. No, I don't no, like what they've done no. to him at all. <laughs> I don't even care. I think we'd all agree with he that. can stay out of She Hulk. I'm just, I don't care. I don't care if they're cousins, whatever the hell. We, <laughs> we call him Bruce around here. He don't even go about it. He doesn't even deserve the Hulk. <laughs> but moving on, we get, and this is something that we've been leading up to with trailers, TV spots. Hell, they released the clip, but I still think it was pretty awesome. We see Peter Parker, our Peter Parker, Tom Holland, going against, for a lot of people, their favorite live action uh, uh, villain in the form of Doc Ock. Peter at this point is going to meet the uh, the consultant on the bridge about getting his friends uh, into MIT. Mm -hmm. And then we get all hell breaks loose. The spell, the visitors have approached. Doc Ock is on the screen. He's fighting Peter. Chris, starting with you, man. Even though, like I said, we've, we've seen it in the trailer. They wouldn't put it on TV spots. But to see it in the movie, in the context of the film, what would you think about Doc Ock versus Peter Parker on this bridge? Our first big kind of action set piece of the film. I thought this was a fire scene, even though we see him in the trailer. My my audience was very, 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 very hyped when he came out. That the nanotech was crazy. Him taking that was crazy. Um, and just the interaction of two people who don't know each other, but to Ock, he thinks he's, he's supposed thinking, yeah. to. Mm -hmm. So I th yeah, it was a, it was a fire, fire, fire little intro scene. I agree. And uh, Chris, man, or not Chris, but Michael tossing to you again, the first action set piece of the film, which sets the tone for 
every action set piece got bigger and more intense, especially when we talk about Goblin. Uh, but your thoughts on this sequence, as Chris alluded to, the nanotech, uh, you know, Octavius thinks he has the upper hand. Peter's able to use technology to shut down the uh, the tentacles and just everything that played out on the bridge. How'd you think about it, man? Oh, I love this scene. Just like Chris said, uh, yeah, as soon as, even though it was in the trailer, as soon as yeah. you saw the arms hit the bridge, the audience was like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> and like, uh, the the TikTok song that that goes around. I don't know if you guys know, but like I understood the assignment. I feel like Alfred Molina is the, like the definition. Alfred Molina and William Defoe are the definition mm -hmm. of like understanding the assignment. Like I feel like both of those actors and characters, like it felt like they literally just came from the Sam Raimi universe mm -hmm. into this universe. Like it didn't feel like it skipped the beat. Yeah, obviously they looked a little older, but they seemed like- Barely. Exact, yeah, yeah barely, yeah. but barely. They, seemed, they seemed like they were the exact <laughs> same characters. And I loved that, like, and then just seeing the dynamic between the two of them, it's like, yes, this is what I wanted from the MCU spot. Cause we haven't really gotten a lot of the, I mean, we have Mysterio and Vulture, but like just the, the, the really iconic Spider-Man villains, you know, Dr. Okay. Uh, Green Goblin, yada, yada. And even like, I, I just love, and I love the fight sequence and, and seeing Peter like using the cars to interweave the arms. And then when he used the uh, webs to pull the two cars together, use them as a shield as he was mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I, like, I love the way this entire the, action and the, sequence. The, the look on Ock's face when he brought out his, uh, yeah, when, his, his, his tentacles. Oh, we got competition. We got competition. Oh, yeah, man. yeah, like yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I and I, I love, I love all of that. And then uh, when he took, when he took the nanotechnology, and oh, you're not Peter. What's going on? Who are you? Like, I yeah. And then when Peter took control of the arms, it's like, what's what is what is happening? Like, and then him being confused because he doesn't have that uh, level of technology in his universe. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I I love I love all of that, and it's and it's also gotten me more excited about John Watts doing Fantastic Four. Yes. Oh, okay. John yeah. Watts. Okay. Okay. I I am uh I think this was a, a and we'll talk about John Watts a little bit later. But yeah, I'm I'm excited for Fantastic Four. I still have my reservations with John Watts. Uh, but we'll get to that later. Amanda, Bridge yeah. Fight, Doc Ock versus Peter Parker. Now I, I know this isn't anywhere in comparison to that you know the Spider Man Two that fight on the train. Mm, but yeah. hey, we're on a bridge. There is a train involved, and it's the MCU version of it. Doc Ock <laughs> coming back. What do you think about this bridge fight? It, it was great. I think for me, because it's in the trailer, like they fully mm -hmm. like showed that in the trailer, but I think it was the audience reaction to yeah. Alfred Molina that just got me excited. Like I knew the word for word yeah. is like the yeah. hello, Peter. And the yep. you're not Peter Parker. When it, when he said, you're not Peter Parker, my entire theater was like, Oh my God, what does that mean? I'm like, guys, like, did you watch <laughs> it? You're like, do you know what this means? Like, you don't so know what's coming. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, that got me excited. And I was like, Oh, Holy shit, like, what are they going to do? So from the bridge scene onwards, I think that the pacing was really, really strong. And that's when everything was just like picking up and building yep. upon each other, like um, yep. on each scene. And that's what really got me so invested and engaged. And I did not feel this runtime whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Like I could have sat there for four hours and like I wouldn't have even been phased. So yep. That bridge scene just really elevated everything and then just gets you excited for the freaking roller coaster that was about to come. So Amanda, I couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah. Literally, the metaphor of a bridge is the you know, from get to point A to point Fair B. Enough. And I thought when that bridge scene came into the film, that's when the film to me became phenomenal because yeah. Alfred Molina, no disrespect, he's a great villain. But Amanda, when this mother, you know what, came on the screen, uh. <laughs> listen. Green Goblin, we're going to talk to him in a bit. William Dafoe is the GOAT. He is the GOAT, in my opinion. He's always been my favorite Spider-Man villain. And I think, mm -hmm. like Michael said, like it feels like they didn't leave the characters. Mm -hmm. William Dafoe and Alfred Molina, they understood the assignment. But William Dafoe, when he, well, listen, we'll, we'll get into him in a little bit. But as we move on, <laughs> Doctor Strange portals Peter into the basement. He's already at that point, which, uh, you know, he, he said he captured a uh, lizard. He sensed something and he captured him in, in the in the sewers. And that's why he got mm -hmm. the scratch on his face. So yeah. the, the task at hand now is to gather up all these visitors. And Peter <laughs> uh, says, well, I'm going to need some help. And I don't know if I, if it was just me within like a, a point two seconds. I thought that he was referring to recruiting other Spider-Man for a second. But yeah, he brings yeah in, that's what I'm, and, I'm like, this is super <laughs> early for him to come yeah. in. But he's referring to his best friends, which I don't know if it was me. Again, this is just nitpicking, but 
contradiction wise, if you want your friends to be far away from the trouble, to bring them into the trouble seems a little bit contradicting to me, as well as Peter Parker doesn't want anyone to be involved. In I think it's like he wants them to be that far away from the trouble. He wouldn't have even had Ned as his, as his, yeah, right Ned is his guy or, in the chair. Or, yeah. or, or I, let Zendaya I, know that I he's. Get it. I get it. But so. the, whole, the whole point of the film is to clear their names and to keep them safe, but you're, you're bringing them into the, I guess, I guess you can keep them safe with the, with your, with them being the same, I guess. He brings in the Scooby-Doo crew, as Dr. Strange says, and they are now on the task to finding these other visitors, which the first visitor we get on the docket is uh, Electro, uh, which, by the way, uh, yeah. Electro, Jamie Foxx, uh, redeemed. He he definitely has uh, more flavor in this version than we got mm -hmm. him in uh, Amazing Spider-Man 2. Uh, but Chris, man, tossing this to you first, as now we're getting the, you know, we, we put the, the identity storyline I don't say to the side, but we're now focusing more on the multiverse being open. How did you feel about the task at hand is to now find these visitors, starting off with uh, Electro and then Sandman getting into the mix? Yeah, 100% cool with, with this mission. I hated the fact that he had to wear the suit inside out. I don't know why that mm -hmm. was. A, like, I don't know why they cared to do that. Sell or, toys. Or like, what is it? Yeah. Toys. What? Are they, those? Are they, are they making those? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. This Funko yeah. Pops and all this yeah. stuff. That's all they mm -hmm. could have presented yeah. to be yeah, the sell, honest. Sell toys. <laughs> all right. Well, you guys know the answers, so there's that. Then I hate. Well, I hated that. I hate those toys. I hope, hope no kid gets that for Christmas. I hope they get normal Spider-Man toys. I hated that, but that's not that's super unimportant. I I hated Jamie Fox in the movie that he was coming from. Yeah, but I thought he was yeah, yeah from Amazing Amazing Spider-Man. Yeah. Too mm -hmm. right, yeah. yes, sir. Um, hated, hated, hated that instance, and not hated, hated, but didn't like it at all. Yeah. But definitely a redeeming quality from him in this movie for me oh, yeah. personally. A, oh, yeah. a couple, a couple duds, a couple duds, a little extra Jamie Foxx. Like I can see Jamie Foxx here snuck something in there. Yep. It's a little mm -hmm. bit, it's mm -hmm. a little extra, but enough, <laughs> enough, enough good lines where I was just like, okay, I understand what's happening here. This is cool. So Agreed. yeah, I, I like the mission here. Michael tossing it to you, man. We get, uh, again, the mission at hand is to catch these visitors with the help of MJ and Ned. And uh, the first visitor we're going to tackle is uh, Max, a.k.a. Electro. Uh, and then I guess to speak on uh, Sandman, who I'll just put my coin in the hat. Uh, Sandman, uh, he's okay. He's all right. He didn't, uh, visually, I'm speaking, he, he didn't look that great to me. I thought 2007 okay. Sandman looked a little bit more crisp. But seeing that scene play out, knowing that the villains are all in one basement, how would you feel about this, my friend? Um, I like the mission and I like the moment that they introduced Electro. It actually reminded yeah. me of the uh, Spider-Man PS4 game when you're swinging through trying to mm, enter yeah. and, and take out Electro. Yeah. But I will say like Jamie Foxx was better in this one than he was in the Amazing Spider-Man 2, but I was still like, like, yeah, it's, yeah. And he, he see, yeah, he seemed more like Jamie Foxx. Like I didn't, I didn't really see Electro. I didn't see, uh, yeah, Electro. Matt Dillon, yeah, yeah Matt Dillon. Yeah, I, I was about to say Matt Gargan. It was, was, it like, was very cool. like, uh, it was very Project Power. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> like I saw, I just saw, yeah, I just saw Jamie Fox with electric powers or whatever. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, the suit, uh, yeah, I'm disappointed by the suit because I thought, like Yo Raheem said, like it was an actual, differently, like mystically infused. Power suit. I thought, all, I thought in the was trailer it was public. like just like a black suit, like from from three. So yeah. I was like, oh, they got they got a new he got a new suit. I thought it was. I thought I was like, oh, this is no. I thought it was just like paint. yeah. I thought it was a. Just I thought paint. it was a power. Yeah, I thought it was a <laughs> yeah. power suit. Like as yeah, to, yeah. No, no, it's just gonna wear it wear it up uh, backwards. I was like, this this is stupid. This is disappointing. He would yeah, never do that. Just you. He would just wear it with the paint on it. Like whatever. Yeah, it's like <laughs> sell toys. <laughs> exactly. or, or, yeah, like, literally. Like all the other suits that he has, like put on, like he had a suit for for far. I thought from he, had yeah. yeah, he had a backup on a backup on a backup, but like, nah, nah. Yeah. Or at least put, put put on the little mask one, the little bootleg one that he had in Homecoming. Else, the like, monkey suit, the self yeah, suit. Yeah, he did. His have original that suit too. from Homecoming. I mean, yeah, the man's he, he got options, like, but nah, he just had to turn his. No, nah, like, yeah. sell toys. But sell <laughs> toys. Yeah, but but I, still, but I like I like I like the scene, and then yeah, yeah Sandman like. They could have did better with the CGI, and then I also yeah. wonder. I'm like, did they were they not able to get uh, what's his face, the actor Tom, That's what I Tom Churchill what I or whatever? Because yeah, because I'm so yeah, I'm assuming until the end, and even the yeah. end, I was like, I feel like that was kind of like, like stock footage. I yeah, thought. yeah, I feel like it, looked it was like reused footage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it was at the end, yeah, because it's the same like the hand coming out. That's what I. Yeah. That's what they confirmed. I was like, oh, gotcha. okay. Couldn't and then also that? Uh, uh, like 
the li- the lizard for me was the the weakest out of all the villains, mm-hmm. yeah. and then mm-hmm. uh, n- just in the design and the characterization, like Kurt, mm-hmm. like I feel like he wasn't needed. And then I was like, why give him the snout? Like you you changed up Electro's design a little bit, changed the yeah. lizard's design to be be more comic accurate because this yeah. little push in face shit looks terrible. I agree, so, but lizard, yeah. yeah. Lizard yeah. wasn't for me. Lizard wasn't for me at all in this no, film. No. I almost felt like they. Sh- I wish they would have replaced him with uh, Mysterio Venom. or oh, Venom yeah, or Venom. Uh, why was he- Vulture or Scorpion, just, someone else. Don't. Why, like, why was like, that? Yeah, no, we'll talk about that later. We'll talk about that later. I'm we- you know how bad I am? Like, <laughs> <laughs> don't get me started yeah. with that. Amanda, the less of Venom, the less of Venom, the better for uh, me. <laughs> no. It was just anyway. We'll get into yeah, it we'll after. We'll get into that post credit like, scene. Oh. But I think we can all agree, Lizard was, uh, and we understand the circumstance, bringing all the previous villains. But I, I wish they could have substituted him, just make an exception and put someone else yeah. in the film. And not even substitute him. I would have rather than made him better because, like, he was very important in his movie. Like, yeah, and, and he's and he's like really smart and like like just just uses intelligence. They made him so like just dormant. Like I was like, this, that's a genius sitting in there in the yeah. He's a scientist. And y'all are trying team. to like yeah. solve problems. Like Electro, of course, he's a, he's a genius, but it's like 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 Doc Op. You're letting him use his like intelligence. Like Goblin yeah. is not. He's like an inventor, I guess. But it's like you would need the lizard to like help this. Like why are you like why are you putting him there? But. What I, it, I mean, it's, it's he, a lot of movies. He wants to make everybody lizards. That's he wants to make it. Yeah, that's, that was funny. Actually, what was you gonna say, Amanda? <clears throat> I didn't understand because, like, Kurt Connors was also in like the first Spider-Man with Toby. So, wouldn't yeah. like yeah, yeah, yeah. Otto mm-hmm. and um, Norman know of him as well? His presence, in, yeah. You know what I mean? So they didn't even connect that way. Mm-hmm. I guess the dialogue wasn't even because it was just like, okay, we have Defoe and then Molina there interacting because obviously, yeah. and then Same you have birth. like yeah. Jamie and, um, and, uh, the lizard rise. Yeah. Him. Yeah. They're yeah, yeah. interacting. So it was like, mm-hmm. but these characters are in the other universe with you. Like, you know, their yeah. names. So it just didn't, I don't know. It didn't translate for me for some reason. And I also too, I don't know. This is another little nitpick as far as the way they worded it. The villains were picked out of the universe the moment before they died. But again, yeah. Lizard didn't die um, in his film. And this someone else was there someone else that didn't die that was in that well, part. Sam didn't, didn't die. Didn't and, yeah. So I was like, I wish they would have switched that verbiage that they they died or they brought into the moment and them died at them. And I thought that was, yeah. they should have switched that verbiage a little bit. But again, just a little, just a little, little nitpick. Just a little. Mm-hmm. Also, what was Topher Grace? <laughs> He no, was at home. I mean, he was, he was at home. Up. Listen, was, that's no a good point, though, Michael. As home. long as a Venom <laughs> showed up in this movie, I would have been fine. Yeah. But you know, yeah. Like the point, if the spell brought everybody that knew Peter Parker was Spider-Man into the universe, they should have brought Mary in Jane, Venom. Yeah. Mary uh, Jane, Topher Grace. Yeah. Every right they should. They, I mean, right before it, they die, snatch Emma. Uh, Emma Stone. <laughs> To be true, I mean, and again, he we know he's he's uh de- he's canceled right now as far as uh was his name um the actor that played Harry Osborne in in the Spider Man James, James Franco he was a you know he knew yeah. Spider Man he's not a villain per se but he had the redemption like Sam and so I, to, you I, know. I really thought we were gonna see Franco and uh, Topher. So for him, uh, Dan DeHaan, he could have came into the mix too, but mm, he's good. Yeah, but we yeah, can I, keep we're up. good. We're good we're on good. that one, right? Yeah, I agree. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> but moving on again, Amanda, I think you yeah. agree with me at this point. Uh, and starting with you, we mm-hmm. get the feast moment, which means that, and this is something that I thought was so huge. I, I think for me, I love the goblin, but I will admit seeing that that big ass goofy soup this Power Ranger looking design. Yeah. Having him break the mask for me made him even 10 times more menacing. As he mm-hmm. gets to the feast, he RP to Aunt May, which we'll talk about that. But Aunt May, come on. You, Peter was on the right path. He was doing the right thing, but she talked him into, which is a Peter Parker thing. I get it, but Aunt May definitely, yeah. uh, you know, bury, put the dirt in her own grave by allowing Harry or uh, Norman to come into the mix and kind of manipulate the situation, which is a perfect uh, Green Goblin to do. But as we kind of get this fight at hand, Doctor Strange versus Spider Man, Amanda in the mirror dimension, Peter Parker outwits Doctor Strange. Your thoughts on the fight and also your thoughts on the uh, uh, Green Goblin essentially being the main the main villain of the film. Right. So first thing I'm going to say is that I felt that I was robbed on the bridge scene because look how phenomenal he looks. And we saw that in the trailer and I was like, oh, shit's about to go down. And then Doctor Strange pulls 
the whole portal thing on him and we only got to see this green goblin for like five seconds so that i was like this is robbery like what are you doing um but whatever it was just a small nitpick for me i was just excited to see my boy i was like this guy's gonna crush it and i'm so hyped um but yeah i agree he was much more menacing um without that mask because his facial expressions are re- yeah like this one right here um are ridiculously yes. good yeah. and we got to hear him and see the way he's you know reacting to things and i thought that was really awesome uh considering what happens in other fight scenes um so that was great aunt may is just trying to help people i was really happy that we saw feast as well yeah um but yeah that fight scene was okay i didn't think it was like needed between dr strange and peter and uh spider-man it was okay but like geometry rules fam like that's the best thing yeah but uh it was just to show off dr strange i think because like what's the point of having him in this movie if you're not gonna kind of show his powers powers, you know but Mm -hmm. like i i didn't feel like it was too much of dr strange i just think that this was kind of like okay like why are you like keeping him in the mirror dimension like that for like x amount of hours too so yeah, yeah no, i'm right there with you amanda uh and we'll get to i'm gonna talk about that straight in a second but chris mm-hmm. man your thoughts again knowing that uh norman osborne is, is taking advantage of aunt may and her kindness and, and getting her nephew to be on the same page as them as peter now wants to change their fate which leads dr strange versus spider-man your thoughts on the manipulation of um, Green Goblin, but also the fight. Was it something that, and again, they weren't they weren't fighting to the death. It was almost Civil War-ish where they were kind of holding punches of a certain extent. But did you enjoy the fight sequence, man? When I was watching it, and, and it's something I didn't leave the theater thinking back on. Like, I was just like, okay, it was kind of like one of those throwaway scenes. I was watching it thinking, okay, they know that we enjoyed the Mysterio mirror image funhouse scene mm. so much. And they're trying to recreate it here. And I was like, but it's not as good as that one. So I was like, oh, I see what they're doing, but it's not working as well as it did before. So I, I'm fine with it, but I was like, that's what I thought watching it live. That's a great point. I didn't even think about that. That was very similar to the Mysterio. And, and Mysterio won uh, in that fight. Uh, but Michael, man, uh, we see Peter Parker using his... Um, Spidey sense and moving the, uh, the, I can't even remember the name of that cube thing, but moving that and we get this fight here, man. Uh, what'd you think about it? And uh, did it live up to the, the, the trailers of the mirror dimension? Uh, really quick. I honestly don't think Green Goblin was manipulating Aunt May and Peter Parker. Norman I Norman think, yeah, I think yeah. it was Norman yeah. Osborne. Jekyll and Hyde situation. Yeah, yeah. And, and, also, yeah. and I really, good point. Good point. and I do appreciate mm-hmm. that they did dial and delve more into his mental issues and yeah. also both made him extremely yeah. menacing and scary yeah. and also sympathetic. Great point, Michael. Yep. So I, 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 I love, I love that dichotomy. And yep. so like, it made the switch that much more like real and, and like, Oh man, like William Defoe, like and granted, I know the Academy does not like giving superhero, superhero movies, movies yeah, awards man. because <laughs> All those old white men that run the academy, they suck. But like, if he does not get a nomination or something after this movie, like, he, he, burn the whole shit down because like, <laughs> he was phenomenal in this movie. Like, yeah, I wish. and he definitely cemented himself as like one of the best comic book villains and characters of all time. And then also yes, just goes to show why Green Goblin is such a problem and why he is Peter Parker, Spider-Man's greatest villain, no matter which Peter Parker version it is. Because yeah, he's, yes, he's yes, more yes. associated with Tom <sighs> Tobey Maguire, but it's still a Peter Parker. Like, yeah. and I, I, I loved it. And But as far as like the fight between uh, Doctor Strange and Peter Parker, I also enjoyed that too. Like as a comic book person, it's always like, who would win, Wanda or Storm or Jean Grey versus whatever. So like Peter Parker versus Doctor Strange, like I like seeing those them fight and I also really appreciate it like uh going back to what something that Amanda mentioned before like despite despite the fact because I know some people were like mad like oh my god like how did Peter Parker beat Dr. Strange like this is stupid but no I but I also <laughs> like the fact that this is still his movie at the end of the day true, and it also true. goes to show like and which is something that they downplayed in the other movies and they kind of revved it up a little bit at the end of Far From Home but that spider sense is pretty goddamn powerful you know joke yeah. that's true man you're true so like yeah. nobody could compete with the spider sense so even when dr strange true. tried to take like 
he was like, you shouldn't be able to do this. I love that they included that in the movie. And then also mm -hmm. like, yeah, at the end of the day, yeah, if, if Dr. Strange was like really going for broke against Peter Parker, like there's no way yeah. that he's going to win. But I like, sure. like even the science of Peter Parker, like, and that's how he wins a lot of his battles. It's yeah. not, and, and that's something that they downplayed and which is what I loved about and which is why I'm like, this is my quintessential Peter Parker movie. And the thing that I've wanted in both uh, Homecoming and Far From Home, like yeah. Spider-Man wins a lot of his battles from his ingenuity and his creativity. So the fact that right. he was looking at the mirror dimension and he figured out, wait a minute, this is geometry. Like that caught Strange off guard because he didn't think yeah. he would be able to figure that like. Yeah. So like, I, I love the fact that he was able to do that. And like, I, I love, I, I love, like, I have absolutely no complaints about this movie. Like, <laughs> as, aside from like the little leaks, nitpicks like, and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, I have a, I have a little yeah. nitpicks and overall, but like. I hear you. You were, you were yeah. eating it all Look up. at the smile on <laughs> his face. Like. <laughs> I, was, I was like, I was like nerd gasming like, the whole time throughout this movie. <laughs> I hear you, man. And again, visually speaking, I love that scene between those two. Uh, and like you said, Mike, it is Peter Parker's film. Uh, you know, yeah. I just I mentioned it earlier. I just feel like when when films uh, change, I'm like, I'm like fight, me, fight me, <laughs> right, right. When they change the fundamental, like the Doctor Strange, when they dumb them down just to to get on Peter's level, to me, it just kind of frustrated me. Uh, and and like Amanda, we talk about this at nauseum. I'm just I don't like the trajectory of Doctor Strange so far in the MCU. Yeah. I don't think how he they, was. I don't think he is dumbed down though. That's, that's really. No, you don't think so. No, I, just think I feel like in, in Infinity War, which is my favorite version of Doctor Strange in MC so far. In game, my man is just dealing with a body of water the whole third act. Thor Ragnarok, he's just goofing around. And then in this film, I feel like him being trapped, and he literally says, You're in my world now. And I understand he, he took away his thing, but. At this point, I think Doctor Strange would be more powerful enough to not even have a sling to get himself out of a mirror dimension. And I felt like that was another way to like sideline a character is to get him trapped in a well, dimension. As far as, as far as we know, yeah. based on what they said in uh the first Doctor Strange movie, even the yeah. ancient one needs a sling ring. Like there's sling, no way yeah. to open up a portal without a sling without without the without ring. That, so unless yeah. they right. change the rules of what they already established. Yeah. I hope, I mean, because if, yeah, well, if Dr. Strange gets his sling ring taken, well, that's only for portals and all that, and the intern and all that stuff. But I just, I don't know. I just wished it was a little bit more of a, uh, uh, Doctor Strange has multiple and masters. He's also, not the, he's, he's also not the source of, some, great, uh, at he least. still got powers. He's still in, got in, the power. In the, in the comics. <laughs> Because they, they kind of do it a little bit different. Like being the yeah. Sorcerer Supreme, like in, in the MCU, they make it seem like being the Sorcerer Supreme is just a title. You can just be, yeah. become, yeah. you can be elected the Sorcerer Supreme. But in the comic, like being Sorcerer Supreme isn't just the title. It yeah. also comes with a level of extra power that right. you get aside from your general level of power. So, and then yeah. you also get like artifacts like the Eye of Agamotto, which isn't the Time Stone, yada, yada, yada. So it seems like in the MCU, like being the Sorcerer Supreme Switch is just, it yeah, it's just, yeah. It's, you just get your regular, whatever power that you ultimately have, it doesn't come with like extra abilities. And so based on that, like, yeah, like he's just, a, he's still, he's still kind of learning essentially yeah. overall. Like he doesn't know he's as much as Wong. Job. Yeah, he doesn't yeah. know as much as Wong and everything like that. So maybe Wong would be able to, get, I don't know, but. <laughs> we'll see, he has a film coming out in five months. We'll see if, uh, Again, if I see a, a more powered up version of Doctor Strange in that film, then it just kind of solidifies my thoughts on this film that they literally did dumb him down just to fit this narrative. So see, we'll I, see in May what, what I, comes to that. I just mm. feel like he was very comfortable in this film. Yeah. You know, I think that's yeah. I think that's what it is. I don't think they dumbed him. I completely respect your opinion. I'm just saying, yeah. like, I don't think it was like dumbed down. I just think he was like really comfortable with Spidey for whatever reason, like he was just chill because also like you have Wong who's also taking half of his duties yeah. at the same time. So like he can, he can afford to like be scaled back in this maybe. I don't know. And like, he's also a kid. So maybe he didn't want to like hurt him. And, yeah, like, that, that's what whole, I, was, I, was literally just, I was literally just about to say that. I, like, and then not yeah, only just yeah. that, you, like, I, you, can't, yeah. you can't compare like infinity war, Dr. Strange. So cause literally it's like, the Why sake not? Of, it's like the sake <laughs> of the universe at stake. Like he's Dr. More, Strange he's literally more, said, if these, mo if these villains come into our world, it's catastrophic. It's it's a very it's a it's a very big event. If and these villains come into this it. world, it's gonna it's gonna tear the fabric of reality. It's yeah, just he wasn't important. acting. He wasn't acting like that though. That's what I'm saying. The sense of urgency, like, come on, kid, give me the box. Like, I would think this is a Infinity War type of catastrophic yeah, event. Yes, give me that goddamn I, box. I, 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 I'm gonna. No, I, I I agree with that. <laughs> but you also have to take into consideration that he, again, you have to throw into you have to remember his ego. So he's thinking like. You're in my world now. Like, there's nothing. Yeah. You're a kid. You're fucking Spider-Man. I'm going to get you. 
And then all of a sudden, like, <laughs> I'm gonna get you. Yeah, oh but then God. also I'm gonna do a little bit of I'm gonna do a little bit of flair to like yeah. you know yeah. impress like hey oh what is going on? But then yeah. like and this is a big thing with even Doctor Doom like his arrogance at the end of the day is always why he loses. Yeah. And so instead of just like and then also like he did like do the uh thing where he pushed his like body out of his thing. He, like form. he yeah. instantly like even though in the beginning when he like it was just like like bro using the sling right like what are you doing like you're not going to get away from me give me the box like he thought it was over by that point yeah and the fact that he had to even put him in the the fact that he even had to put him in the mirror dimension like he didn't think he had to do all of that and then again like he got caught off he got caught off guard like once peter figured out the mirror dimension like geometry and everything like that like that caught him off guard and then like how he uses his magic it comes from his hands if you if his hands are tied up what is he gonna do like he's still a normal guy like he can't like he, he's just a tired old man. Just a tired like, he's old literally man. A tired old man. There was a meme I wish I would have brought up I saw on Twitter. It was like Doctor Strange after Infinity War, in game, and now this movie, he's just sitting on a bench, just like and now he has to go into the multiverse of madness. It's like the man, he probably is tired mentally, tired. physically, emotionally. But Michael, what were you saying, man? <laughs> yeah, but I was saying, like, once Peter figured out like caught him off guard with the with the webs and and got him like you know tied up like that, like yeah, and, 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 like. Yeah, there's nothing, I, there's nothing I, he can Chris, do. Amanda, I Chris, Michael, I hear you I guys. Got you. I, I got hear you. you. I'm just, me, again, me. I just, <laughs> I just expect more from Doctor Strange. That's all I'm saying. And I, I feel agree, like the film is, is, is just like he has to fit into the narrative. As I feel like a lot of these other characters haven't had to fit in the narrative, like um, you know, being kind of sidelined to a certain extent. But it doesn't take away from again the greatness that the film has to offer. I just, I, I want more from Dr. Strange. That's all I'm saying. I just, I just want more Dr. Strange. Give it to me in May. Impress me. Cause I wasn't that impressed with your individual film and some of your other appearances in the MCU. But as Damn. I digress, but yes, I wish, on- <laughs> I wish they would show like yeah. Dr. Strange being like the same, the sorcerer Supreme, like May. Yeah. Whenever my that whole comes thing out, is Dr. Strange, you know, give blood it to sex, go imagine. I love yeah. Like I am more attracted to the, supernatural side of, yeah. of of fantasy and everything like that so that's why yeah, i do yeah. like dr strange and things like buffy the vampire so like supernatural and everything yeah. and i do and i do feel like even in his movie like they weren't even magic they were just making like and basically they were fucking thena from uh eternals they were making yeah. energy energy weapons energy they weren't really weapons and- yeah i know so yeah, I do want to see more of that. But yeah, yeah, like I don't think he was. Yeah, I don't think he was dumbed down. All right, Peter, all right. Peter outsmarted Strange, and he is. He a, did, and he a lot of people smartest, agree with you all. He's one of the smartest yeah. people in Marvel in the comics. So like, yeah. I what? hear you guys. I this just was missed. a battle. Oh my this was goodness. a battle. This was, a, this was the battle right here. But I appreciate you guys. Again, I still have my feelings about Dr. Uh, <laughs> so I'm like, I y'all need to have me on the more. Hawkeye episode because I'm like, y'all are like, oh, I don't like this. Hawkeye is my favorite show of all the I can Plus tell. I, I, yeah, I, I've, 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 I've watched your, was it last stream? I, yeah, I know you're loving it. I'm, That's I know crazy. You're loving it. Oh, damn. That's crazy. We'll, That's hey, crazy. if the time allows it, Michael, we would love to have you on on Wednesday, my friend. Uh, yeah. If your sure schedule's not available. It. I'm, I'm we're gonna have arguments, Michael. <laughs> oh, Wednesday, Wednesday, we'll have a civil war on Wednesday, ladies and gentlemen. But Doctor Strange, he's he's in the in the mirror dimension, uh, you know, thinking about his next moves in his film. But moving on, we see at this point, uh, we we have this device that can fix anything and everything, which. MacGuffin. Uh, it can fix uh, uh, my man's uh, chip. It can fix everyone in the room. But of course, Green Goblin uh, manipulates the situation, blows Doc out, out of the window. He tells them to live up to their potential, who they are as people, which at the core, these are villains. And this is why they went down that path. Uh, and then um, Amanda, starting with you. Mm-hmm. This fight. Now, I, I, I'm hard, I'm torn on if the fight between Green Goblin and Tobey Maguire's uh, Spider-Man in Spider-Man 1 was as brutal as this WWE tables, ladders, and chairs throwing each other down through windows to build. Amanda, take, please. What'd you think about this? (laughs) I was in shock, (sighs) to be perfectly honest. As was Peter Parker. (laughs) I was like, what is happening? And then I started rooting for Gobby. I was rooting for Green Goblin, because I'm like, yeah, beat him to a pulp. Let's get the show on the road, because realistically like even peter like he hasn't he has fought he ain't like, seen vulture. hands like that amanda <laughs> he hasn't and i'm like that's what i'm saying and for me it's yeah. like he had the peter tingle evolve yeah. 
in this particular film, as Michael was saying, but especially for me in that fight scene where he really came into his own because he had to, this guy was going to kill him. Literally, he was going to kill him. That's the way it was looking. Yes. And everything from like not pulling his punches, like he was letting him have it. The webs, like the web work as well. Like it felt like the PS4 game, sorry, like the, the Spider-Man game. Yeah. And it just, it felt really different than him fighting vulture or him fighting mysterio <laughs> yep. because this is like a well-rounded spider-man at this point and like that's how i felt and that's where it's like now it's believable for me to be yep. like seeing tom holland as peter parker and spider-man i'm like now it's connecting and it took green goblin to fight which is even more amazing in my eyes so was it a bit much sure but it's because we haven't seen him fight like that and it just added so much growth to this character and his journey yes. as spider-man he literally beat the boy out of spider-man and made him become a man in that yeah. scene uh chris man this fight uh brutal, brutal everyone's mentioned is, is a brutal fight uh and it is it goes to show you sam raimi too because that's where the that's where it started which gets me excited for dr strange too because sam raimi is the director of that film he he knows how to handle villains i'll just say that but Chris, man, we get Doc, or uh, we see uh, Norman in the situation, and he takes my man Peter Parker and throws him in every which way in that building. Uh, which, by the way, I'm glad no one was in the building because their apartment would have been destroyed. Uh, which, by the way, was it weird? Was it just me? Was it weird seeing five villains, Spider Man and Aunt May, in a condo? Was that just a weird thing to see on screen? Like, yeah. I don't know. This is very weird. <laughs> Not bad. They this would do it. They would do it. It was a very John Watts, like, just to kind of play against, you know, expectations. But anyway, Chris, your thoughts on this round one of Goblin versus Spider-Man? Yeah. Was was it round one when he was punching him and he was just laughing? Was that round one? Yeah. Or was that round two? Yeah. So someone put it in the chat, too. But that was what stood out to me. And I was like, very, very The Dark Knight. Um, oh, yeah. You know, Heath Ledger. Very, like, yeah. it, it, it brought me back to that same moment. I was like, oh, he, he's really channeling Heath. From that scene there but yeah I, i'm not gonna take anyone yeah i'm not gonna take any more time but amanda said everything perfectly i was like this is yeah. it's iconic it's goat level fight man and like someone i don't know if you all saw the interview but uh, i don't know if he did all of his stunts but he did have an interview uh that came out a couple days when he said his his main catalyst to coming back to his role was like amy kevin john watts i want to do most of my stunts as a 66 66 year old man uh it brought it brought a lot to that to that scene but uh mike man your thoughts on uh tables ladders and chairs the spider-man uh green goblin edition yeah, as a as, as a uh, WW, uh, granted, I don't really watch it anymore. But as oh yeah, me neither. But back in the day, well, back in the day, don't Sunday, know, Monday, a, a, Tuesday, Attica, yeah. Wednesday, Thursday, pay per views. Uh, yes, <laughs> attitude era. Yeah, yeah. attitude yes, era where the Rock, Stone Cold, K, yeah, Undertaker, man. like yeah, Hardy man, Boys, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Generation X, like yeah, all oh, the well, mankind, man. like all of yes, that. So <laughs> I love this fight. Like again, blood, sex, gore, and match. Granted, it wasn't like gory, but like this fight was brutal. Ooh, gore. And yeah. like, this is like the first time, like different than all the other villains that he fought, because this is the first time he's fighting somebody that is on his level in terms of strength and strength. power and even yes. exceeds his strength and power. Cause yeah. he's not going to be able to throw him. Like he's not punching the shit out of uh, Vulture like that. He'd kill him. Yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> or uh, Mysterio. So yeah, like, and the fact, like, he power bombed him through like <laughs> floors, floor after floor after floor, yeah, like, like you, like you so said, good. he beat the boy out of the spider, yeah. and made him <clears throat> Spider Man. Like, I yeah. love that. And then also, like, Peter's not a trained, right? You know, Shang Chi needs to help him out. Uh, yeah, he, he, to he, get he, some eventually, yeah. Lessons. yeah, he yeah. needs to get that way of the spider lesson, which yeah, I'm hoping, I, I'm hoping they actually do. do oh, they, I hope so, especially That'd with uh, so Simu Lu having a, his backstory with Spider Man, doing Spider Man uh, parties and all that. I think we're gonna get yeah. those two on screen. So that that'd be that'd be cool to see. But yeah, like yeah. Peter, Peter has for the most part, not to say he's had an easy time before this, but. This moment, I feel like kind of sh like shit is real being a superhero. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Because like Green Goblin was about to kill his ass. Yep. <sighs> I love and him so much. Me too, man. I yeah, I I I, I loved all the and then uh, Aunt May. But yeah, like oh yeah, yeah. Let's, Aunt May. Perfect I, I segue. Yeah. Perfect. And by the way, again, this just goes back to my point of him breaking that mask. Him seeing him without the mask made it more menacing because you can see his eyes, yeah. you can see yes. the rage in Green Goblin. That. That was a great decision for him to destroy that mask. But Michael, 
Perfect segue, man. Uh, starting with you. Uh, as we see the scene play out, Peter Parker makes his way downstairs. Aunt May has the device to kind of give him the antidote. She sees his nephews in in, in, in trouble. And um, as we know how the scene plays out, Green Goblin throws the bomb. And by the way, he hits her with the glider, which I think was the blow that may be internally yeah. bleeding. I think that was the, the blow for her. She hits the ground. Green Goblin gets out of the way. Peter's it's it's an emotional moment. I don't know if Amanda she might start uh, tearing up here, but uh, you think everything's fine, right? Yeah. And it's it's almost like the Infinity War moment. Where it's like you know I, I don't feel so good, Mister Stark and uh, Amanda, or I said, I'm sorry, Michael, um, Aunt May, R.I.P. How'd you feel about this moment? Man? I, this I is, was uh, fucking shocked. Like yeah. I, I did not. They did especially, it, especially especially when she got up and she's talking. Like I thought she was yeah. just like shaking. Like this is like her first time really getting into the thick of it. She almost got blown up. She almost got kicked. Like, so I thought she was just like, like when she was shaking, I thought she was just like, you know, coming off of, you know, the ang- adrenaline and anxiety and everything like that. But then when she like started falling, I was like, Oh no, they're not about to do it. And then even, even when they kind of was like going in that direction, I was still just like, and even when, when she like, like stopped breathing, I was like, yeah. Oh, we're going to see her at the end and she's going to be fine. They're not about to kill Aunt May. <laughs> like, absolutely not. And then, when she acts, when she was actually dead, I was like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" Like, I was like, "No, <laughs> what are you doing?" But yeah, the whole scene was emotional and, and, and very unexpected. Like they, the fact that they made her his uncle Ben. Like this mm-hmm. whole trilogy was basically mm-hmm. his origin into becoming the <clears throat> Spider Man that we know and love. Especially that suit at the end, fucking loved it. But oh, yeah, yeah, like, I, but I'm also kind of like, I don't get it in a sense of them making her his uncle Ben because. Doesn't he have an like? That's the thing I'm confused about. Does he have an Uncle Ben? Because that briefcase and what she far from home, it says, to it. yeah, has BP. everything she's been through in Homecoming. Yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah the, the conversation that he had in uh, in Civil War, like oh, bad stuff happened. You got to do the. And I mean, not to get graphic, but she's been sleeping with Happy Hogan too. Like you would think there would be a little bit like I lost my husband, whoever Uncle Ben. But she's you know, I mean, she um, Aunt May got a groove back. Let's just say that. But go ahead, Michael. Yeah, but it's been it's been oh, yeah. who knows how long it's been since Ben. Like she's got to move yeah. on. But like I didn't have sure. a problem with that, but I'm just like, does Uncle Ben exist in this? World? Like I'm but when, even but when, even, when even, what, and, even in what if they talk about oh Uncle, Uncle, Uncle ben. ben I lost Uncle Ben I lost Tony, but I'm so I'm like. But when Toby and Andrew were talking about Uncle Ben, they made they they were talking about him like as if Peter should as our Uncle Peter ben. should know. Yeah, yeah. But Peter, so maybe, didn't, maybe, Peter didn't even but maybe, mention it. Right, but maybe Peter maybe his Uncle Ben died when he was way too young and he didn't have no kind of connection with him or something like that. I was going to say, mm-hmm. even at the end where they showed the gravestone, May, they didn't even show May next, like next to I May don't May think he's dead, to be perfectly honest. I don't think he's dead. I think he just dipped. He just dipped. I this really man. don't think he's dead. He went to go work for Tony Stark and he's going to be uh, a villain. Another vi- Maybe, you don't know yeah. that, but I genuinely, like, especially at the grave site, like... That's a good point. He would have been right beside <clears> her. <throat> Like That's, buried, yeah. like it doesn't make sense to just have her and no Stealing. Ben Parker. Yeah. So I really do think that he's still alive, and like when he gets word that she's dead, he might come. Maybe back he'll picture. come back. That's so, a good point. That's, That's a good the point. thing that confused me because yeah, because what if it's supposed to be canon to the MC? And to he, say, he even says, "I lost Uncle Ben." A lot like it's so, well. So, that's yeah. I mean, that's a different. That's our a different <laughs> Peter though from a different uh, universe in regards to that Peter Parker so with the zombie now. episode. <laughs> It's confusing now. It, yeah. But I mean, I will say, though, as far as like seeing Uncle Ben with this version of Peter Parker, we know that Disney did announce that we're getting that animated the freshman, uh, year. freshman year. So maybe yeah. we'll see an Uncle Ben in that or get more information on what happened to him. But you make a good point, Michael. Does he have an Uncle Ben yeah. uh, in this universe? Which, not to go back, but uh, Norman Osborn does confirm that there's no Oscorp in the MCU, which is very interesting because I, I would love to see Harry and you know, not you know. Norman, uh, but mm-hmm. and Timothy Chalamet is Harry Osborne. Uh, so. Yeah, that's what the rumor. But anyway, <laughs> more on on Aunt May, man. In regards to that death, did, did you tear up at, at all when you when you saw that she actually did die? Me, oh, Michael. I'm sorry to, to finish oh, up, Michael. Oh, yeah. me? Oh. No, I, I mean I don't cry in movies, but <laughs> you like Chris here. You like Chris here, right? He's the, the Come on. I'm like who? Aww. Yeah, but no, I didn't. I didn't tear up, but I still was just like, still no, shocked What you, are though. you doing? Yeah, yeah. It still shocked me. <laughs> well, Amanda, I, I'm pretty sure I, I got a little teary at it. And I'm sure you had uh, a couple tears uh, shared it there. Well, your thoughts on the sequence, the scene, the emotions? Because uh, let's be honest, Melissa Turnway, just like Flash Gordon, has been wasted. Uh, <laughs> Flash Thompson, 
they didn't give her the much to do in the two previous films. And they gave her, you know, the, the uncle Ben moment in this moment, uh, and her, and her death. So for me, as um, you guys have heard me on other streams in regards to Ben Parker, not being in this, um, he in like Toby's and Andrew's, he's the heart of Spider-Man and he pushes him forward to become Spider-Man. So for me, it was like lacking in this trilogy where he had these like, uh, paternal figures but never really having that connectivity to him and like knowing him the best and it was always at may um so for me the lack of uncle uncle ben was like something that really bothered me but in this case it was the most perfect moment for aunt may to say that line and when she said that line with great power comes great responsibility and it was just dead quiet there was no score and it was just like the person that knows him the best saying that line to him, my entire theater said the line with Aunt May and I got goosebumps. I still got goosebumps thinking about that because it's just crazy that they even did that. Um, and I started crying cause I knew she was going to die. That is when I knew she was going to die. And I think it was per perfectly executed. And that's what kind of pushes him into becoming a man. Also, Green Goblin beating the shit out of him, but it's like that, like all of that together oh, just made him one, become, yeah. he's literally Spider-Man. That is the yeah. moment that really pushed him for me as well. And I'm like, this is yep. one of the greatest moments yep. for Tom Holland. And he put on a freaking clinic too. I mean, that performance just chills. Wake up, wake up, yeah. Man. wake up. Yeah, that was- Lit Yeah, goosebumps. That was great. Chris, man, and again, I guess- this when I brought up the question about not Norman Osborne not being the MCU, are we okay with that Norman being that catalyst to getting him to that point? Are we okay with that? Or do you, you guys, uh, Amanda, uh, Michael, before we get to Chris, did you guys do you want to see Norman Osborne in the MCU? I do. You I do, do too. Amanda. Okay. Yeah. Chris, I man, same do. question for you. Do you want to see him, or do you feel like his point of what he pushes Peter Parker in the comics have been addressed in this film? Or do you want to see that character in the future? I do want to see him just, but I'm just being like, just a fan. I don't know yeah. that we need it. I'm not saying if they don't show him that we're, we're, we'll be lacking in some area, but yeah. <clears throat> uh, da, 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 da. Yeah. This scene was big as I think I, I echo Michael's sentiment. I thought she was dead as soon as she, he got hit. She got hit by the thing, the oh, glider. Yeah. Yep. And then I thought when she got up, I was like, Oh, she good. She good. And I think the hardest, and I, and I wonder the, the, the directing or the writing choice to, to remix the line a little bit. Because then I, I noticed that, yeah, you remix the line that makes it new and kind of different. But then my crowd was trying to say it too. But then because she remixed the line, they weren't, you couldn't say it exact. I don't know if you guys mm. thought about that or noticed that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I thought about that too. But I think the hardest scene that came out of all of this was later when Goblin reminds Peter that I'm a bad guy, but like you did this, like this is all your fault. Because it was, he's not wrong. So I was like, that is some dark, deep savage shit. Savage. And, I love it. And so that whole scene, that that later scene is what I was like, okay, this is heavy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that it was definitely an emotional scene. I don't cry in the movies, but I wasn't feeling good about it. Yeah, <laughs> it, it was it was RIP. RIP to her. I do I, not that we ignored Jonah Jameson. Uh do you guys have to to get to right team's points uh as far as MCU Jason Jameson? He's great. I mean yeah, it's JJ. Yeah, I, love, I mean yeah, I love him as JJ. <laughs> He's fun. Thank He's God. Fun. He, they well, actually, him. actually, actually, I will say I it, it. it was a perfect missed opportunity where they didn't like where Toby Maguire could have been yes. like, yeah. wait. Yeah. Wait, aren't he you? He looks, yeah, he looks, he's yeah, just, yeah, he I looks agree. just yeah. like. It's like, I worked for this jackass. There's two, <laughs> two moments that I, and we're going to get to Toby in that moment, but also I wish that Toby and Green Goblin would have had a conversation oh, or a fight. Uh, but you know, we, we get, we got what we got, but no, Joe, the uh, you know, he's, he's fantastic. He's fantastic. But moving on at this point, Peter Parker, this is the biggest moment uh, that he's ever had to endure. I love the way that the show or the movie, the show, but the, uh, the movie, Shows us the the scene in the rain when my man's in the rain and in the plane and in, in, in front of the, uh, <clears throat> the teletron and or the big screen and all this stuff going on and now the big moment has come, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm gonna start with you, Amanda, because mm -hmm. at this point, Ned and Mary Jane are at Ned's uh, Nana's house. They have the box, Ned, which I'm just gonna say it now. I find it very 
hilarious that Ned knows magic. Uh, he's able to learn magic quicker than Doctor Strange. So but fucking random. So like, random, whatever. Michael. <laughs> if they would have even maybe shown us in Homecoming that he likes to do magic tricks, I don't know if this was planned 10 years ago for Ned to bring in these two <laughs> characters, but I'll put my grievances in the I would, I would have liked to see Wong teaching him. Someone. Yes, yeah, someone. Thank you. Just, now, just they, for I, the funny, but like yeah. him joking like, Oh, is it like this? And he's like, yeah. no, like that's the, you're going the wrong way. Like as a joke. Something. And then he's like, Something okay, else. I understand. Yeah. They do say it in the movie. I know he's mentioned it when he first meets Dr. Strange that his Nana thinks that they have magic, yeah. but I th- that doesn't get I'll, I'll be disappointed yeah. if this is never brought up again in other yeah, movies. No, man, those they magic. only did it for this movie. And then it's like, wait, did you forget? Like, Michael Ned better they, be in Doctor Strange too with uh, America he, Chavez. Yes, Wanda. He put need to be in there. Like, they're still there. training sorcerers. Like, put him in fucking Carmitage. <laughs> <laughs> My man's is uh, learning magic on the fly. But as Amanda said very early in the stream, it doesn't matter how we got to the point. Yeah. We get to the point. And the point that I'm referring to is, uh, and I don't have any official pictures because everything okay. online, I don't want this streaming a pool for don't like, it, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These two gentlemen come into the mix. A man is starting with you, and we get the person on the right of the screen, uh, Andrew Garfield. He walks I'm into the screen. And we up. talked about at the beginning of the stream, knowing that they were going to inevitably become yeah. the execution still. I was I couldn't have been happier. I'm gonna start with you, Amanda, Andrew Garfield, and then we'll we'll transition to Toby. But Andrew Garfield. <laughs> I've comes been, to the MCU, yeah, like he's never left. Yeah, I'm literally tearing up right now. I just remember <laughs> it. Like, no, it's really bad because I was crying when Aunt May. That whole situation was like beautifully executed, and then you have some like playful banter between the three of them, and then you see you see Garfield, you see him. Like the portal's open, and he's so far away, which I thought was a really nice touch. Like yeah. that was really smart to do. So you just see the figure of Spider-Man. But then yep. the second he turns around and you see his mask, <laughs> holy, like, yeah. I swear to God, my whole row leaned forward. Like it, we're like going down the freaking peak of a roller coaster. Okay. Like we all leaned forward and it was just such a moment and him walking like forward running forward like yeah yeah peter like come come and then we're all like oh my god oh my god oh my god and then like when he jumped out mask off like just thunderous applause (laughs) it is one of the most incredible experiences Mm -hmm. in a theater I agree. And I think that's what made it for all of us because you're watching it with like massive Marvel fans beside you. Like, you know how big this is going to be. Yep. But to your point, Elliot, it's like he walked right out of T. Like, Amazing, Amazing Spider Man 2. Yeah. Yep. And <clears throat> there is some growth. Like, you do feel the pain and the weight yep. of losing Gwen yep. in that moment as well. But he's just a phenomenal Peter Parker and an amazing right. Spider Man. Ha, I can do it too. <laughs> so, yeah, I did it. Um, but he was just so playful and fun. And for me, it's like with Andrew, you could feel him just so happy, happy. Like everything, yes. every piece yes. of his every <clears throat> line of dialogue is like a yeah. freaking spider-man again and that again. is yeah. just if anyone deserves it out of the three of them it's him yeah. because it's he him. got like the short end of the stick and he needed I, to get a third film he didn't get a third, third film. film so i but feel we'll talk like about that later yeah yes yeah and i just i felt so happy for him like he deserves it and it was so much fun zendaya throwing the bread at him like i was just dying <laughs> in the corner yeah, and all it that was, it was cute but yeah it's the theater experience that really made that moment special i think well said amanda chris man um Toby McG- or Andrew Garfield, man, I guess he's a he's a liar because he's been lying for months. He's oh, werewolf. He wasn't in the movie. I bet you still to date, the man says he's still not in the movie. That's how committed he is as in the should. role, as he should. He kept his mouth shut, man. Shout out to Andrew Garfield. <laughs> uh, but Chris, man, you see the moment. He comes out of the portal. Uh, it's, it's, and again, it's like he never left. But also, damn, man, I said, you know, Green Goblin, Andrew, he stole – the, that that half of the film when he whenever he was on screen whenever he opened his mouth and like a man it was just pure joy coming out of his mouth it's just pure joy to be back in the role Chris man what did you think about Mr Andrew Garfield uh, coming into the movie Yeah and he steals the the screen because he's the most like charismatic Peter that we have like and that's probably some of the problems that people even had with him in the first place that he was never like nerdy he was smart as hell but he was never like nerdy or like not confident really like we didn't believe that he wasn't confident enough to axe this girl out 
So that's that's why he can steal this the screen so easily. But yeah, I mentioned in the beginning, I, I thought it would be a more of an epic reveal, but when it was happening and the crowd was going so crazy, I didn't even care anymore. I was just like, I'm willing to accept this yeah. because I haven't heard a crowd roar like this that wasn't at a sports event. Like right. it's been or since, uh, Endgame it's, or Infinity War. I was about to say yeah. it's been since Endgame and yeah. and uh, Infinity. Yep. for these these type of moments and it, i mean like and i i haven't got a chance to watch it again but i need to because i wasn't even hearing the dialogue for, for the first couple <laughs> lines when the crowd my crowd is going crazy like we're going crazy yeah. so like i i wasn't even be able to hear it um a couple corny cheesy things that that i would have cha- i would have written it differently in the in the scene but i like touching the ceiling i like that i wouldn't have made him go and get the web and all that but <laughs> But he, yeah. they just gave him so many more things to do before they can get more screen time for him. Just like whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 As yeah. he should, yeah. as he yeah. should. And then I guess we'll talk about Toby after. But yeah, that's oh, what yeah. I'm at with it. I hear you, man. Hey, Michael Andrew Garfield, who has been like Amanda said, got the short end of the stick, but he now has a moment to uh, play in this universe, to play with other Spider Man. But he he steals a lot of those scenes. How do you feel about it, Michael? His interest in the in the in the movie. Yeah, I'm glad to see uh, Andrew get. <clears throat> Uh, another shot at uh, being Spider-Man because I mean even when he first was first cast in the Amazing Spider-Man movies like he talked about for a while like how much of a Spider-Man fan he was and he mm-hmm. really like, was really pushing those yeah. movies and was super excited so I know like not getting a third movie was absolutely devastating for him so the fact that he was able to get this chance to get this is technically now his third Spider-Man movie in a, in a yeah. sense yeah like yeah you definitely felt the fun and excitement come coming from him from the moment he entered the screen uh like chris said i do wish the way they were introduced is a little bit it's just it was so red i want to see peter okay andrew garfield okay hey, let's, hey. let's try it again i want to see peter <laughs> like what it was it was so it was it, it, it. It, yeah it was very red it was very, very random red. They yeah, yeah they could have did, did it another way i don't know but, yeah. and whatever i'm not a writer i don't know what other way they could have they could have did it but like yeah, I, li- I like the whole scene. Like, yeah, the audience just like erupted the moment you saw this. I heard somebody say, "Is that Toby?" It was like, <laughs> it was like yeah, it was, it was, it was crazy. Like, I, if, if I'm re- if I'm rewriting it, I would have maybe had Strange, Strange be the one because yep. Strange, because then it t- it shows you Strange who's like <laughs> anti kid, anti spider, and all this, and he's like, I think you're an gonna adult. Need, you're, you're gonna need some more help, and I found. Yes. And like they would, that would have been, been epic. Crazy. It that been would have been in Infinity War for me when uh, uh, Cap came into the train and the Cap and they they set up that yeah, scene. Just, uh, Thor with the hammer on Wakanda, and then yeah. of course Thor or uh, the Endgame. Captain. It could have been that level with Doctor Strange, like you just mentioned, Chris. He's been he found a way out of the mirror dimension, and like you said, you need help, kid, and I got someone to help you out. That yeah. would have been epic. But Ned, he's gonna be and forever. They, and, known. They, and they come and they about. both come down in the suits. And then they both take their take thing, their, their mask off one at a time. That's what yeah. that's what I would have done. That would have been epic. The a reason for times over. The reason why I like that it was MJ and Ned is because they are the most connected to a Peter Parker mm-hmm. versus mm-hmm. Doctor Strange. So I think that's why, like for me, it's like they were willing. Like let's feel where our boy is, and yeah. like let's have him pop up. So I think like I completely understand where you guys are coming from in a more like mature way to do it that way. But I think that this, um, yeah, 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 I completely feel <laughs> you. But I, for me, it was just like, it all, it worked for what it was because they are sure. so connected to him. And to be honest with the two, man, it, it's the homecoming trilogy trope. It's a, you know, to expectations yeah. are, it's not an infinity war. It's not in game. It's, John Watts is the whole, you know, Breakfast Club, Ferris Bueller kind of yeah. way of doing things, right? So it kind of fits within right. the other two films to have that moment be in a kind of goofy way. I don't want to say goofy, but in the way that it was handled. Yeah. Uh, but we spent so much time talking about Andrew. We got to spend as much time talking about the first live action Spider-Man on the big screen. Yes. Uh, and Toby Maguire, who uh, looks a little bit older, but I don't give a damn. He's still, as they say here, the youth pastor himself coming in, Love dropping him. Bible verses. Uh, and I think, if I'm being honest, and I'm going to start with you, Michael, this was the funniest that we've seen Tobey Maguire as Spider-Man. He wasn't, he was, you know, he was fun and all, but yeah, he wasn't no, like hitting no beats like, like that. Yeah. <laughs> no dancing. <laughs> yeah. Like they, you know, well, yeah, the but writers. They, yeah, they, but they definitely more. MCU'd him. Yeah. That's a great way yeah. to put it. Yep. <clears throat> uh, and, but you could also tell that even, I feel like Toby had fun 
coming yeah. back. Because yeah. there were a lot of rumors and stuff like, oh, Toby's the one that's given the most problems and everything like that regarding the kid. We, he might not be in the movie because he's asking for too much money, yada, yada, yada. But at least what we, and all that may or may not be true. I don't know. But at least right. what we got right. on the screen, it looked like, is, he, was it looked like he was having a good time. 100%. Yeah. And so that's <laughs> something I love. like. You could definitely tell that they came to play. They didn't just come to collect the fucking check. Right. Which, 100%. you know, good to collect the check you know give pay, pay me some money but like yeah. you still yeah. you still got a job to do like make me love you and yep. he definitely made me appreciate and love the fact like i saw him back like toby like granted i don't dislike toby as, as spider-man peter parker but i would say he's probably on the the third of the list in terms of like tom holland's my favorite than andrew than toby yeah. but i still appreciated him more as you know the first the og the original the the older one and then also i like the fact that when uh the two Spider-Men, they saw each other, Andrew and Tom. I mean, mm-hmm. Andrew and Toby, like almost like in uh, Spider-Man Enter the Spider-Verse, the spider sense went off for each other and they kind of like didn't know who the other was and they tried to use their web against each other and showing that Toby's more of the veteran, he was able to catch Andrew. Yeah. So I like the, yeah. that little that little hint and nod or whatever. So yeah, like I love, uh, and I love to see the interaction between the two, the two of them and even the three of them as the two, as or the three Peter Parkers, like, yeah, I want... I want more, like a whole movie with just, <laughs> just, just three, yeah, right? three, three yeah. of that kind of like uh, Hawkeye, Yelena, and Kate Bishop sitting at a table just talking. Yeah, I want to see the three Peter Parkers just sitting at a table, just having a conversation, like the one where they were talking at the bridge. Like what? I, I, I you, the Avengers? What, you are in the Avengers? What is that? Like, what is that? Like, is it yeah, a band? I, I love, yeah, like, I love all. Of, yeah, I love all of that. <laughs> I, I agree, it. man. And Toby's back. Uh, Amanda, your thoughts on again? A lot of people in the in the comments. He's the goat. He's the goat. He's the OG. Uh, he's coming back. And I mean, <laughs> just from an actor perspective, we haven't seen Toby Maguire in a movie. And I want to say in seven to eight years. Yeah. Uh, he's gonna, you know, he's gonna be in Damien Chazelle's film next year, uh, uh, Babylon or something like that. But he, he's back. And he's like he's never left. He still has the Spidey suit, and he's still ready to go into action. But. Uh, yeah. This moment to me, seeing Toby will be like how I'm gonna feel seeing uh, Michael Keaton in the Flash next year because this is the Toby Fair. we grew up on. So, yeah. your thoughts on Toby Maguire uh, making his MCU debut? Uh, he is the goat. He's my favorite, just uh, because I did grow up with him. And I think what was so beautiful about this was that like Andrew and Tom looked up to him as well. So to have him on set as like everyone's OG like even that it was like the blueprint of superhero films too because like I I feel like what Raimi came in to do like he knocked it out of the park with the first Spider-Man like the whole trilogy is solid so in this case to have to see him was just like oh my god you got so old but at the same time it's like that's our like that's like that's my Peter Parker like it was awesome and he played it more reserved because he is a bit shy yeah. In, in the way that he played him. I still think his comedic timing was on point. Yeah. The line delivery, just everything was great. He walked straight out of the OG. Um, but for me, it wasn't seeing him. It was hearing him. Because mm. for some strange reason, his voice is just so distinct. And it's like burned into my memory, yeah. even playing the video games and stuff like that as a kid. And it just chills. Yeah. And again, I cried. So like, what else is new? <laughs> I cried the whole time, but... I really love seeing Toby yeah. and just having him there. It was just, it was awesome. And I'm really happy he came back. Chris, man, were you, were you just as happy and uh, excited to see Toby make his way into the, to the big screen, man, or return to the big screen? Yeah. I mean, I remember high school watching that movie. Well, I, before I saw the movie, maybe one of the older kids was talking about how he went to see Spider-Man one, and as soon as he left the theater, he was trying to climb a wall. And I was like, damn, like that's, that movie must be good. And, I, and I'll never forget that. And that's so long ago. And, and I hated how he looked coming into the movie. And I still think that it could have been more epic. But they did make up for how he looked with his suit later, the suit reveal later. They made up for that. And to Amanda's point, I well, first to Michael's point, because I was going to make the same exact point, that I don't know. I was, I was avoiding all the rumors. But just the rumors that I heard was that Toby was not all the way into it. They, he wanted, they had to throw more money in his face. And I was like, this nigga not going to be into it. But this motherfucker was into it. So <laughs> I was I was very, very, very happy to, to see that. Yeah. And you you made the point that he, they MCU'd him. But I don't think they MCU'd him as much as they like 2021, this nigga. Like, it, like we would make fun of all that shit now. Like, it's like not yeah. even MCU. It's just like he was willing to say like, yeah, some of that shit a little cheesy. Like, I get it. Like, yeah. I'm here. It's 2020. <laughs> it's the future. Like. 
you would make fun of this no matter what. And I think right. like yeah. more than Jamie Foxx's joke execution, more than any Tom's or anyone else's, his was the best because it was like mm-hmm. more fish out of water mixed with being an OG and good at your craft, which is I like. I like that yeah. a lot as far yep. as like any type of movie. Yeah. So I was like, man, this guy is good. This guy it's, is good at his job. I can't say it better than you all have said. I think there was another rumor that um, <clears throat> they consulted with Mark Webb um, and, and uh, Sam Raimi to very similar to the whole uh, uh, James Gunn and the Guardian situation uh, that they consulted with him with the Guardians and the Finney War. And I think you know, yeah, it would have been it was if that is the case. I, I love that they brought those guys in to you know maybe give John Watts a tidbit of how the characters would be in the MCU. So I love that fact. So you know, kind of wrapping up the uh, the back half of this film. They're now, and again, you know, the whole them nerding out, them using their intellect to find, you know, to discover the the webbing and, and having the conversation. I think, if I'm not mistaken, there was the whole meme thing of Spider Man pointing at each other where Ned asked the Peter Parkers, uh, and, and Peter Parker yes. one, Peter Parker two. So just all that stuff and the, the knowledge that they obviously noted that's a meme and they were able to put that in the film is just genius within itself. But they have to work together. I want them to actually like point. To no, no, no. Point. And, yeah. and, I, and I, I said the same thing. I was like, they're gonna do the meme, yeah. and what they're gonna do is when they're fighting, they're gonna be like, "Who said to do that?" And then some, like they're all gonna point at the other one, and I'm like, they're gonna catch it there. The same thing when when the Juggernaut yeah. came out. When I'm the Juggernaut bitch was crazy, and they found a way to put that shit in X three or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. And I was like, they're gonna do it, and they didn't do it. But yeah, they didn't do it. <laughs> No, I, yeah, and it, it was it's still yeah, and it just the the mixing of it, just the a fact that it was a little bit there. But then again, just seeing them having the conversation, the youth pastor joke was thrown in there. <clears throat> the conversation about the best friend turning into the villain, which who knows what Ned, who in the future, you yes. know, he knows magic. Now. Yeah, he knows magic now. <laughs> like, <laughs> <God> <laughs> Anything can happen. <laughs> uh, what's his face? Baron Mordo's gonna get a hold of him. He's gonna get a hold oh, of there, right? Get his cell phone and uh, be a villain. <laughs> but uh, they have all that stuff. They come up with the plan to meet the villains at the uh the new statue of liberty with cap shield showing some mad respect in the mcu mm-hmm. for cap uh but yeah they go there it, it did collapse unfortunately but correct me if i'm wrong hawkeye takes place after this movie so didn't did they fix it and is or we if it's hawkeye before the timelines are all uh, yeah I'm, it's, I don't it's a bit crazy I think it's like because because this movie takes place during christmas yeah it's called as hawkeye and then you also saw the rogers the musical yeah not, yeah billboard yeah. in this movie so i don't yeah, I don't know what what time. Yeah, it's I don't the, know if it's before, right before, or right at. Like, yeah, I don't know. Kevin, let us know. Kevin Feige, if you're out Please. there. But um, <laughs> we go to the Statue of Liberty. They team up. The the back joke was funny. I didn't think that that ran too long. I it thought was it was just so just give me more of scenes with them interacting with each other. They, <laughs> the webbing together, the silhouette of them coming from the moon. It was all epic, but then just going to speaking of epic, uh, and, and by the way, Amanda, Chris, and, and Michael, do you guys have anything to add that just stood out to you in those sequences before we get to the Mary Jane part? The organic yeah. web conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Amanda. I forgot about that. But tw- not once, twice. Does it, yeah, yeah. it come anywhere else out of your body? Yeah. Like funniest because we all talk about it it's like we brought it up it's just funny it's great I, and I, I think i think andrew's reaction the most like we can grab it. he was like how does that work? like <laughs> his reaction was funny yeah hilarious yeah. chris do you did you catch anything my friend that this was like this is just hitting on another level no my my was for like the, the like the last fight later there Okay. Got or so, even like, or even like the uh, I'm Peter number one. You're P- I'm Peter, 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 Peter three. three. Like, <laughs> that was genius. Be- that was on another level. Yes. What What he's saying is, go I know on you guys Twitter. Think my yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, go I know. On yeah, Twitter no, I get it. Yeah. It or, so or, or even like going with that, where where, to- where, he, where it had to come from Toby, the goat, the OG, Same. saying. No, you are amazing. Yes, it yes. was so that, cute. That wasn't that wasn't Peter Parker talking so to Peter Parker. So that was so Toby Maguire talking to Toby. Yeah, the same, they did yeah. that uh, with yes. with X Men uh, Days of Future Past, or maybe one of the, one of those when they said, you know, the the third one's always the worst when they were dissing X Men. Oh, when they yeah. were talking, yeah. yeah. But yeah. I mean, I love like films do that. Fair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's such a great point. It's so great, <laughs> so great. You bring it up, Michael. But again, going to that fight, you know, we see the villains, the three of them, and Electro is all boosted up. Uh, but a man, I'm gonna have you take this 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 moment here. Uh, this is the moment that we were speculating, you know, wouldn't it be great if Toby so uh, saved MJ and uh, Amanda, it happens. And then that doesn't just happen, but the fact that he lands, saves her, are you okay? Starts to tear up. And MJ is, are you okay? I'm going to be okay. Amanda, 
redemption for Toby, saving Gwen or not saving Gwen, I should say. Um, for me, I called it in the trailer. Yeah. I said yeah. the second I saw MJ falling, I'm like, yeah. Andrew 100 <laughs> percent is gonna go save her. And yeah. it was the most beautiful moment for Andrew Garfield um, just because they were having those conversations, especially between like Toby and Andrew, like they were talking about like relationships. And and I thought that was a, like such a special moment where it's like, you'll find someone like, and like referring to MJ, but in that case, because he was supposed to meet MJ in his third one. Yeah. So um, it was a beautiful moment. I think that the fact that he caught her without the mask on is that like, it was Peter Parker saving MJ and not just Spider-Man, which is the whole reason why like basically Gwen died was because it was the back snap or the neck snap, however, like however you want to say it. So he saved her as Peter Parker and it was just beautiful. And again, like give Andrew Garfield an Oscar for this entire journey because holy shit, did he act the crap out of that moment? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was incredibly emotional. And <coughs> we, we got some claps. Everyone was clapping in that theater when he saved her. So it was nice. I agree. Michael, man, he, he gets his redemption and saves MJ. Uh, and Amanda even looks, I didn't want to graze over the fact that the three Spider-Men have that moment at the top of the rooftop as well and talking about power and sacrifice and the losses. But then to see him, Andrew, talk about winning that moment on the roof to have that redemption in this film pretty pretty special yeah like i thought it would have been stupid if they didn't make the choice to have andrew garfield say i'm so like true. from a narrative so perspective true. yeah and yep. give it and putting andrew garfield in this movie like yep. there's no way you can't have her have him save her so yeah. like i wasn't surprised when that happened i was but i was still glad that they actually went through with it and uh mm -hmm. yeah because like it's basically giving him his other shot, his, you know, his redemption of, of having having this uh, another chance at being Peter Parker. And then also, like, out of all of the Peters, I do feel like Andrew was the most emotional one. And I think part of it is because he's getting his other his his shot, like the I mean, like the character, like the way he portrayed the character. Like yeah. I feel like was the more emotional of of the three yeah. of them. And I and I and, and I love I love that and like. I want Andrew Gar. I want to see Andrew Garfield return back as Peter. Par like put him over in the Venomverse with 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 a Morbius and and uh and whatever the Craven the Hunter Craven movie that they're getting that. with and with uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson or whatever. Like put him over there and put and Tom Venom. Holland over put Tom Holland over here and like give it to me. Give him a give give him a amazing Spider amazing deserves, Spider Man yeah. three over over here. Yeah. Chris, man, I know you don't cry, man, but you, you had to have a little, little bit of like, oh, man, that's, that, that hit pretty hard. When uh, he gets to save her and he's okay, she's okay, he gets his redemption story, Chris. Did you, did you did. get a, 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 just a little bit emotional, Chris? Come on. There, there was a time where I would have, if I was going to cry, I it would have been at this moment, and it's a little bit later, we'll get there, and I'll I'll reveal my true secret okay. of where, okay. where I would have almost <laughs> cried, because I, I really was getting emotional. <laughs> but this... I, this is sad, of course, but my theater, of course, showed love. Everybody was clapping and cheering. I got it. I didn't predict it. I don't, I don't ever predict <clears> nothing. <throat> but um, I, I was like, man, this is so good. This is really good. And I never knew I never knew that he was even supposed to have a third movie so that, that he would have had an MJ and all that. I didn't know that story. But yeah. Damn. yeah. Uh, so Shailene, Shailene Whitley. Whitley. Yeah, yeah, they cast her and they had yeah. a scene in it and they got cut. Who was it? What's the, what's the actress? Shailene, Shailene Whitley. Whitley. Yeah. She, that was the oh. post credit scene for The Amazing Spider-Man 2 and then mm -hmm. they just... They pulled that shit. Took that away. Right, took his dad it, being it, alive it. away. They they yes. Sony really effed up Mark Webb's. Wait, cut. Modern Family. Hold up. She's her? on Big Little Lies. Big Little Lies okay. and uh, the fault, fault in Our Stars. Which actually, uh, speaking of which, uh, Nino Black made a comment, which I'm like, actually, I would like to see that. Like that story is intriguing. Like uh, seeing like what Andrew Garfield was talking about, not pulling his punches after Gwen died. Yeah. Because I'm like, so basically that alluded to, I'm like, so that means he was killing folk? Like, mm. oh, yeah. I want to see interesting. it. I yeah. would like um, to see it. Did he go, did he go all Ronin or like after? So, yeah. hey. so I'm it, like, that's intriguing and it, interesting. Mm -hmm. Michael, you're on to something. And I was going to leave that for a little bit, a little bit later in regards to Toby or Andrew. But, you know, in the, in the Mobius trailer, it says that he's a murderer and stuff on the wall. So is that alluding to Andrew going to that dark side? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But uh, as we wrap up this third act, you know, we get that that fight, the other fight with Andrew, or I'm sorry, Toby, not Toby, 
Tom, uh, Spider Man number three, <laughs> <Too many. laughs> getting his chance to get his his to get that rage, and he almost gets to that level where he almost kills the Green Goblin, which Green Goblin wanted that to happen, but Toby stops him. He grabs the glide uh, the glider, and I, I don't know if anyone in Hollywood could do a better struggle face than uh, <laughs> than uh, my man Toby McGuire. Whether it's the strength, like he has like yeah. a lip, and he knows how to yeah. have a struggle face. But <laughs> sucks. For two seconds, starting with you, Chris, did you think that they killed Toby Maguire when he when he got stabbed in the back by uh, Green Goblin? Did you think that they had pulled that move and killed him in, in that moment, or were you were like, okay? I mean, obviously, we know he didn't die, but for a second there, I thought they killed Toby Maguire in this film. Oh yeah, yeah. When, I, when Green yeah. Goblin stabbed him in the back. <clears throat> yeah, I thought it, I was like, no, there, that's crazy. Because then I thought I was like, damn, well, he, he only agreed to do one movie to come back. I was like, I thought, I thought all these things are like, yep. And then I was like, maybe they're just doing him like Batman and uh, Dark Knight Rises, where they just give him a little got cut by uh, Natalia, yeah, he's a little jab by uh, Miranda, (laughs) Miranda Tate. And uh, I was, yeah, but yes, to to your question directly, yes, I thought he was dead. Yeah, I agree. And in that fight, man, it's it's even brutal. And and Peter, don't forget, he still has that rage. He still, which I think is going to talk to that post credit scene with the the black suit. But uh, Michael, man, just wrapping up that fight, man, and, and groveling, getting almost the best of him. But Toby coming in as a mentor and telling you don't want to, you don't want to do it, kid. Yeah, like I, I, I mentioned earlier, that overall nothing really surprised me in the movie because of all the leaks and everything <laughs> like that. Actually, I, I, let me retract that a little bit. This is the one thing that did surprise me because I thought Toby was gonna die mm-hmm. at the end of this movie. So when he got stabbed, I was like, no, uh, no, that, yeah. I don't. It's the one <laughs> prediction I don't want to be true. And so then when it turned out it didn't happen, it was like, oh no, I've been stabbed before. He got up and it wasn't almost the same situation. <laughs> yeah, that was, yeah, yeah, that was a good line. That was a good line. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I was like, oh, he's not dead. Okay, good, good. Yeah. So yeah, but I, I, thought, think- I thought I thought I thought that was it. I thought it was done. I thought same. It was, yeah. Same. No, I was gonna say, did, did anyone think as a rewind a, a couple scenes? But when when he said, "Yeah, yeah, I was an Avenger." Earth Mightiest Heroes. No one thought that 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 Toby was gonna say like Kevin Bacon. No one thought that. Kevin Bacon Kevin with Bacon. the the Thor. Oh, who said that? Um, it was uh, Peter, no, Chris, Peter Quill. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Quill. yeah. yeah. I, I don't like, know. Oh, they're gonna, they, I was like, oh, they're gonna bring that back. I, I was like, oh, no that. one, no one thought that. Okay, got it. Well, I, I, like, I guess oh, it does confirm that. that Toby and Andrew have no other heroes in their world. Is just just them. They're yeah. fine on their Which own. Which makes sense. It's, like, yeah. <laughs> it's like if they did, then it's like then don't you just bring Iron Man? Bring to, I, yeah, guess, to help you know out. I mean? it's, yeah, it's a little, it's a little too easy. Very true. Very true. But uh, Amanda, your thoughts on yeah. the fight and the, and the stabbing and, and maybe thinking Toby was going to die, but ultimately helping uh, Peter, uh, you know, our Peter, not go through through it. Yeah, it was a phenomenal scene. It was yeah. a f- great fight scene. Uh, again, <laughs> Willem Dafoe acting clinic. Jesus, like scared the crap out of me. And he's the one villain who genuinely scares me. Like he's terrifying. And, and I love that he's in the MCU. Um, I love that Toby stepped in. I did think he was going to die as well, but it was that one exchange where like, it was like no words were spoken and they were looking at each other. And like, he kind of like talked him down, like through the, like the Spidey sense. And I thought that was really special for Tom Holland to have that moment with Tobey Maguire is like a, not a passing the torch type of situation, but it kind of felt like that. And I'm happy that they shared that moment together. I agree. You guys hit the nail on the head perfectly. And as we wrap up the third act, you know, Spider Man comes up with the ultimate decision and ultimate sacrifice that would, in order. And also, too, by the way, uh, besides seeing potentially Rhino silhouette, um, yeah. Scorpion silhouette, and I think um, my man with the staff was uh, Craven the Hunter because like it was Craven, something like oh, those, Craven, those uh, lions on his shoulders. But did you guys catch any other villains coming through in the multiverse from other Spider-Man villains? Or did, I, did you guys see? I, yeah, I those? those. Yeah. I have to watch Which, it again. <laughs> I, have to watch it again. <laughs> I have to watch it again. Yeah. 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 Uh, hey, can you pause that for a second? Uh, Mr. Please. Uh, Mr. Mr. Projector, sir. Right. Let me see you in there. But <laughs> he makes the ultimate decision. He says his goodbyes to Ned and MJ and come find me, all that stuff. Which leads us to, I, didn't, I couldn't find a good picture. This is behind the scenes. But he eventually makes his way to uh mj and ned which they're not a couple right they're, they were just no. friendly no, no and, and, I, and i thought they were going there. yeah i thought they I were thought going, they were going, 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 going there. there i thought, I thought, I thought when that showed like, up don't and you like, dare yeah. I, yeah i thought they were about to kiss i was like yeah. oh right. the same, that, same. that is mr, mr. Still, still your girl. girls yeah. <laughs> 
Yo, I thought my man was going to hit him with the Spider Man three. Yo, how's the pie? It's so good it's so with, good. Uh, with Harry, but there you go. we'll see. We'll see. They're going to be in MIT together. They might be uh, yeah. sharing a bunk. We'll, we'll see. But uh, tossing it to you first, Amanda, as we wrap mm-hmm. up that third act, he says goodbye to MJ as she the cuts on her eye. And that's when he realizes, I, I can't get you guys involved anymore. Live your life. Uh, be safe. Be happy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think she'll, you know, Zendaya is going to make her way into the fourth Spider-Man. But right now, she's not on the, on the table. But the thing we've been waiting for since Spider-Man uh, Civil War, no Iron Man suits, no Avengers. Yeah. It's Spider-Man. It's classic. He gets his suit. He's on the radars. He's flying through New York. Amanda, how perfect of an ending was it for, I'm not saying the greatest ending of all time, but in this trilogy to get him from having all the stuff given to him to now have to give for his own, fend for his own and become Spider-Man. Yep. Amanda, how'd you think about that ending? Boy became a man. Yes. That's literally, yeah, that's yeah. the best way to put it. And it's just something I've been waiting for. And I didn't, again, like coming, getting to this point, the suit's stunning. Like what, like it's just beautiful. Then in like the moonlight and the snow, like it was just such a beautiful moment for him. But for me, we didn't know, I didn't know that we were going to get a trilogy after this. So leading up to No Way Home, I'm thinking that like, okay, when the hell is he going to take things into his own hands? Mm -hmm. When the hell is he going to do things on his own? Like I was getting frustrated because I wanted him to already be that and he wasn't. Um, But this is what I was waiting for. And that's why this movie for me is like the best out of the three. Um, I just, I really love that moment. Backtracking. Um, I also do think that we're not going to see Zendaya in the fourth one. We're going to see her in the fifth one. um, Just because of the way that even Ned, I don't think Ned's coming back to be honest, because when actors are crying that hard in a scene, that's a goodbye. I personally think that they're like, it's the last time they're going to be, on screen together that's just like me Mm. looking at it because they were crying way too hard for them not to see each other in the next one so i i had that feeling where like it's gonna be not the three of them for a little bit and that that's where what i got from it but also one thing peeved me i'm going really like rapid fire one thing that did peeve me was when um mj was wearing the black dahlia necklace all peter had to do was like to trigger that memory was that like, from? where'd you get that from? So that yeah. was just like a very, very minor nitpick for me, but mm. I guess the band aid did the work. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, it's a perfect ending for the trilogy and I'm excited yep. for the college years in that case. Hey, a lot of great stuff said that. I will say, they are going to MIT, and I know uh, as far as like the set pieces or set design we saw in Black Panther 2 that uh, Riri Williams is going to yeah, be uh, like, MIT. Oh, character and you know and yeah. also it looks like Shiri's going to be going to MIT so yes I don't know if Ned and Zendaya's MJ can make a little cameo in Black Panther too but uh Maybe. we'll see we'll see and also Killmonger he went to uh, MIT as well so I don't know we'll see if we'll see them see. again but Michael I know you got to head out because you're going to see this film again uh and yep. you're going to let movie, us movie, co- movie confirm. starts at 10 45 yeah oh, shoot. You, you will be confirming so before you head out Michael just your final thoughts on Spider Boy becoming a man and then again if you want to throw in maybe what you will hope to see for the next films of Tom Holland um, I loved the ending of this movie. Like I said, this this movie was my quintessential Peter Parker. Even going back to the fact that, like, because there's a whole saying when, like, with with Spider Man and that he pushes for. Because throughout most of the MCU, which is something I criticize them for time and time and time and again, because I'm like, you can't reuse these great iconic actors. Is the fact that they keep fucking killing their villains. Yes. And it's so annoying. Like, I would like to see Iron Monger return or like mm-hmm. Yellow Jacket. Yeah, like, like, like a lot of these, like you killed Kate Blanchett. Like, what are you doing? Like, what bring her back? Like, I can't believe you killed Hella. Like, but the thing that makes Spider-Man different and that I'm glad they did in the MCU, and it's something that they always do in the <clears> comics, is like, and Peter Parker has this saying all the time: no one dies when I'm here. Granted, sometimes it does happen, but overall, Peter Parker will do his damnedest to make sure everyone survives, including the people that are trying to kill him. So I really love the fact that they used, that they took this movie and had Peter Parker take these villains and they're like, no, I'm going to be different. These people are not going to die on my watch. And I loved that whole thing and that whole dynamic and and just the even, even the switch of showing like when he killed Aunt May. And then him switching to become like him wanting to be a murderer and wanting to kill 
uh, Green Goblin and then Tobey Maguire kind of like, like I love all of that. And then it leading into him becoming the comic book accurate kind of Spider-Man with the yeah. suit. Like this is the first time we've actually gotten a suit that looks exactly like it does in the comics. And the shit is gorgeous, especially with the light coming on the, coming on the suit and uh, everything. And then we're, we're getting our broke Peter Parker all over again. Like I had a, a lot of criticisms regarding the Tom, like even though Tom Holland is my favorite Spider-Man, Peter Parker, mm -hmm. I didn't, I never liked the way he was written in terms of like yeah. him be, yep. being Iron Iron Man Jr. And, and, like yeah. That. Yeah, like, yep. and like, couldn't. yeah, like never re relying on this AI instead of his genius. And and all, but yeah. yep. now that we got the end <laughs> yep. of this trilogy, I do like that this is, that was basically his origin story. And now we are going to get the Peter Parker. Like this, this yeah, is all man. a buildup of him being the, the college, you know, you saw he's getting his GED and maybe he's not going to go to mm -hmm. MIT, but he's going to go to Empire State University, another comic book nod. And yeah, I don't know. But yeah, I loved the whole, the whole thing. It makes me want to replay the video, the PS4 video game <laughs> right? all, over, all over again. Yeah, and like, I was. I'm actually shocked that we're getting more trilogy, especially with the No Way Home. I was like, oh, are they going to take him back to the Sony verse, and he has No Way Home back to the yeah. MCU? like that was everybody. I feel like that was yeah. everybody's prediction. Yeah. For the <clears throat> movie. But especially with the money that Sony's making from participating with Marvel, absolutely no. He's going. I feel Gotta like at this going. point, he's never going back to the Sony verse. They're <laughs> no. Like, no, like because Marvel, cause the Spider-Man movies have never made. As far as I know, they never made a billion dollars until like far from home and and this yeah i think you might be right man yeah, yeah until yeah. they did the partnership so this movie's definitely or or not uh this movie but he, they're definitely i feel like they're definitely gonna stick with because this partnership is working for working both, beautifully yeah. yeah for both parties so yeah like i'm excited about the next trilogy of spider-man because honestly I'm, I'm tired of spider-man being a high school like most of the stories that we know from spider-man is him in college the adult age yeah, yeah. So I'm yeah. ready for them yeah. to move, move, on, move on with that. And so, yeah, I appreciate, I, I love this new set of trilogies. And I do remember that when, uh, when Kevin Feige first got the rights to uh, Spider-Man, he did say that he envisions like seven movies, yeah. kind of like, kind of like Harry Potter. So I'm, yep. I'm, I'm, I'm very stick interested. In it, stick, stick to those words, Kevin. And it looks like it's heading that way. Yeah. So. I'm very, I'm very <laughs> interested in seeing this yeah. next phase. Of uh, Spider Man, of Spider Man. So yeah, well said, I'm here. I don't think it's coming anytime. I don't think it's coming anytime. So I know they said needs a break. He needs a break. Said that, yeah, I know they said they're yeah. working on it, but yeah, I don't think it's yeah. coming. Yeah, I don't think it's coming because it's been two um, years. Every two, it's 2017, yeah. 20. You know, so he needs a break. But speaking of needing a break, because they got to go to this movie to see this again, Michael. Man, it's always a pleasure to have you on, my friend. Again, we'll we'll talk if you can make it uh, as far as your scheduling goes. I would love to have you on the Hawkeye with me, Amanda, and Chris, and we have another couple other special guests. So I would love for you to be on if if time allows it, my friend. But even if it doesn't, I appreciate your time tonight. If you want to let the fine folks know where they can find you, what's next on uh, your channel, and also uh, promote your, your live stream for tomorrow, my friend. Uh, yeah, like I said, you can find me all over social medias, Black Gay Comic Geek. Yeah, tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on my own channel, my own YouTube channel. I will be going live with uh, Fantastic Frankie and my other uh, co-host, Ron, from You Don't Read Comics. We will be doing this discussion. Again, uh, spoilers for Spider-Man No Way Home, so definitely pull up if you are available. Uh, as far as the next thing, other than that, uh, I get, talking about the season finale of Hawkeye, and then also I haven't seen The Matrix Resurrection, so that's going to be uh, coming down the stream when I get a chance to see the movie. And so, yeah, hopefully you guys uh, pull up and support me on, and support me on the channel. And I always, Elliot, every time you hit, send me a message and ask me to be on uh, the stream, I always, I always get excited because I love talking to uh, you, Amanda and Chris. So, yeah, definitely won't be the last time. And yeah, I'm about to go see Spider Man. No we'll way home. Yeah. yeah, see it again. See it again, yeah, and then yeah. I'm seeing it again on yeah, Tuesday. Yeah. So yes. yeah, but real quick, I just wanted to say when uh, the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Only because it's me. But when the conversation between Toby and Andrew about was like, oh, you'll you find something. Yeah, you'll find crazy, something. Yeah. You shut up, Chris. You shut up. <laughs> it was like, oh, it's going to come up again. It made me think instantly about the conversation where Andrew Crawford <laughs> was like, oh, MJ should be Michael B. Jordan in the next movie. So I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, Andrew. Um... <laughs> Spider Man 3, Michael I B. Agree. Jordan, MJ. <laughs> I agree. 
Let's I get agree. it. But guys, <laughs> as you can see on the screen now, tomorrow, I'm. Hey, you see what I'm doing, ladies and gentlemen? You see this? Set your reminders uh, and go ahead and give the man a <laughs> thumbs up like already because uh, you already know it's going to be a fire stream. That's tomorrow at 6 p.m. We got your boy, uh, Michael. We got uh, uh, Frankie well, 6 and Ron. 6 p.m. for you. It's 7, 6, 7, 7, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Yeah, gotcha. Eastern gotcha. Standard time, yeah. So definitely do yourself a favor. Continue the conversation on this channel tomorrow. You guys won't be disappointed. I'll be watching it uh, uh, and checking them out. But, Michael, it's always a pleasure, my friend. You have a good second view in the Spider-Man, and uh, you have yourself a good time. Actually, hold up. The last thing before I say, because take I know it, you guys it. are about to talk about the post credit scene. Yes. What the fuck was the point of Venom? <laughs> Cause I, I still got enough time. Cause they're gonna show some. They're gonna show like twenty minutes of trailers, so I can leave a little. Yeah. But yeah, like what the fuck was? Yeah, like what was the point of that? Like they brought they brought him in, in the out. universe in and out just to take him out. And then also like it didn't make sense to me because if the point of the spell was to bring everybody that knows Peter Parker is Spider Man, then he doesn't know Peter Parker in his universe. So why was he even there in the first place? Like it didn't Unless make... they're recognizing the fact that the symbiote knows knows because it has it oh, said true. in the post credits that they they know other worlds and I, I don't know yeah I don't know. I don't know Michael we'll see that was literally their way to bring in the symbiote was to bring Tom Hardy in for two two scenes it's so yeah. upsetting and that, it, was just, it was yeah it was just basically their way of leaving a, a piece of the symbiote there yeah yeah but yeah I was just like that was stupid all right whatever Mary. Mary. <laughs> anyway Same. I'm out Michael it's always a pleasure man <laughs> we talk to you later man. Thank you guys. Enjoy. Take care. Enjoy, Bye. my friend. But uh, and, uh, guys, again, Michael's uh, all his information is in the link in the bio. Subscribe, follow him on TikTok, Instagram. Phenomenal person. Uh, but Amanda, mm. going back to the questions I had asked Michael. Oh, well, actually, we, we talked to you. Got your point off about Peter, Peter Parker ending. Chris, I didn't get your thoughts on the yeah. ending for Parker becoming a man, fending for himself. I did want to see. I wanted to see the landlord from Tobey Maguire's movie be his landlord. Oh, God, I could have sworn. That would have been perfect. We was going to get, gonna get the, the landlord would, or the girl. Uh, I, yeah. Or the girl or the daughter be the landlord. That would have like, been. We're getting one of these cameos, and I know that for a fact. And yeah, I so wish to. Their schedule was busy. They, they didn't allow him. didn't allow him. But Chris, I man. I guarantee you, they tried. Guarantee. They probably did. He was like, oh, no, I, I don't got time. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the characters retired. Chris, man. Peter Parker, he's fending for himself, and 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 he's <laughs> Spider Man, Spider Man. What did you think, Chris, of the ending? <clears throat> nah, I thought the ending was great. You know, of course, as a viewer, we're all sad that you know MJ doesn't know him and he's lost his friends and all that, but he knows it's for their own good. The suit was crazy; everyone was clapping crazy. I thought, like you guys said, it was a, it was a perfect sum up, and then it gives us like a kind of like a clean slate for this dude to have his own movies going forward. Mm -hmm. And this, the ending hit harder. Or hit better because we know that they just re released these plans of like more movies. So like, if we were kind of unsure, it'd be like, damn, like they did all that, and we don't even know when we're gonna see them again. But, True. Yeah. but the True. fact that they gave us a little like insight that made it, that made it hit harder. Yeah, one, well, I couldn't say it better myself. Yeah, and for a split second, I was like, man, this 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 would be a per if if things with Sony and Marvel didn't work out, which it sounds like it is working out. That would have been a perfect way to write him out of the, well, not really write him out of the MCU because he's still in Marvel Cinematic Universe. But as far as like the world not knowing who Peter Parker is, that would have been a great way for Sony to be like, let me go ahead and snatch you up. Uh, yeah. But he's still in their universe. So unless there's some other Spider or Doctor Strange 2, Multiverse of Madness, unless Tony or uh, Peter Parker is chilling at home and he gets sucked into, <laughs> you know, Spider-Man's or the Sony-verse, that could still happen. But it, it was a great way to end it. It's a great way to all the faults that you all have mentioned, being in the Iron Man shadow, not really having to have his own villains. Because that, to be fair, even in his film, those weren't his villains. <laughs> I forget that. Those were someone else's villains. So the fact that he's going to finally get to be his own Spider-Man is, is very exciting. Uh, yeah. The fact that, you know, all these villains don't know who he is. And it's like a reset, which is a soft reboot of essentially like some. Yeah, uh, Nate brought it up. It's like a reboot, which is a, yeah. a one of the best ways I've ever seen a reboot in a franchise uh, to to launch off three more films. And, and the guy, I say the guy, the CEO of Sony, I can't think of his name right now, he did confirm on the red carpet that we're going to get at least one more MCU Spider-Man appearance, which I think probably is Doctor Strange. Uh, if I were a betting man or, I mean, Hawkeye, that would be would literally break the internet. But I doubt that. You know, but who knows? Who knows? But, uh, you know, as we wrap up the film again, we'll, we'll get to our overall thoughts. But just a couple more topics before we wrap it up. I want to start with you, Amanda, mm -hmm. in regards to post credit scenes. 
The first one we kind of alluded to, <laughs> but let's just elaborate on a little bit more. We see Venom in, in Mexico talking to, I can't think of the actor's name, but for all my Ted Lasso fans. Uh, Danny Rogers. Say, Lasso. Danny yeah. Rogers. A little, little Ted Lasso uh, <laughs> appearance there, but he's talking to him about Thanos and Iron Man and, and the MCU stuff that we've come to love. And then he gets brought back into his universe, Amanda, but he leaves behind a little symbiote. Your thoughts on that and what it can mean for Spider-Man 4? Is he going to get the black suit and in the, in the, in the, in that whole thing going on? Listen, <laughs> I look at my boys. I love them so very much. <laughs> I love them so much. And that um, post credit scene for Let There Be Carnage made everyone lose their minds. So I genuinely thought that Venom was going to be the six. Um, in this movie. So when it was like halfway through, I'm like, this guy's not showing up. What the hell are they doing? And then like, I'm very happy with the film. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. It's just the fact that like you put that post credit scene in Venom 2 only to give me a very shitty post credit scene for Venom in this one, just because he has to leave a piece of the symbiote. <laughs> like that's all you got Tom to do. So it just, it's upsetting because I really would have loved to see Tom Hardy with Tom Holland. Like, I think that they would have had great chemistry. We're not going to get that because that symbiote is going to go to another version of Eddie Brock. I think in the MCU, we could get the black suit. I think that'd be like stunning to see, but I think it's also like it could be too soon to introduce that for him in a fourth movie. I, I don't know. Um, considering that like Toby got it in like the third one of his. So I, I think that'd be too soon. But for me, it's like we've invested so much time in Tom Hardy as Venom, as Eddie Brock, that like I don't want him to be recast, you know, in, in this. Because it doesn't make mm -hmm. sense to have like Tom Hardy's Venom yeah. in the spunk and then have him recast like Eddie and Brock and they, like, it just doesn't make any sense. So it's just making me unhappy that that's what we got Venom for because like, it's about damn time that they, they meet and it's not going to happen in the way that I want it to. So. Amanda, I feel for you, but I'm going to be real, 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 real. <laughs> I do not like Tom Hardy's Venom. <laughs> that's fair. I'm not a fan. I love Tom Hardy. I love Venom. Yeah. I don't like them two together. Uh, so I am more than happy that Kevin Feige said, hey, we're just going to borrow you just for a second. We just need mm -hmm. that symbiote. And go ahead and go back to Sony Universe and please recast Eddie Brock in the MCU because I, I just personally, I don't like the goofy self. I'm not a fan. I'll just say that. That's fair. So I love the idea that we can maybe see another. And, and it makes sense to see him in the MCU. <clears throat> He's an adult now. He has to he can get that rival of Eddie Brock in the MCU. Uh, but Chris, am, am I on, on a on a plateau by myself with tom hardy and, and your thoughts on venom no, not no, being in the mc <laughs> oh my god that's what's on, that's what's that, like, that second movie like really angered me like like i really hate that movie like a lot and that's why i still talk about the eternals uh rotten tomatoes so much because they get they they act like that movie was decent the it venom was, too they were sipping the kool-aid <clears> yeah <throat> sipping the fucking kool-aid disrespecting the eternals like that anyway it was fun no it wasn't venom <laughs> one was venom one was fun Venom 2 was disgusting, but okay. I had I thought I thought percent agree with you, Elliot. Um, and then even in the post credit scene, like I would have, of course, re way rather preferred to see the actual Venom. I'm like, oh, we're not even going to get yeah, the actual little, yeah, yeah, yeah. I and then I thought I was like, oh, oh they're they're showing they're showing Tom and the crowd's getting into it. They're like, oh my god, we see this, but it's like the Venom 2 post credit scene was better than the Spider Man credits with I like, guess it's just like that because it made more sense. And, it, yeah. and, and if we and if we didn't have the Venom two post credit scene, then this post credit be, scene yeah. would have been epic because <laughs> yep. we would have been like, exactly. wait a minute, Why is exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as it is. Yeah. But you can't let them win. Whatever. That's where I feel like. So I love your idea of letting the symbiote stay behind and then giving it to someone else because we don't yeah. even look at this guy. Tom as a bad guy, a so villain. it's like, who, exactly. who's this guy Michael gonna fight? Yeah, exactly. They're gonna be besties. It would be oh, so cute. Spider-Man and Venom as besties. Yes, why oh, not? <laughs> and then, like, you That's know, sad. something bad can happen and become, you know, rivals. It happens. We'll, <laughs> listen, we'll see what comes up again, what they're gonna do with Tom Hardy. And, and 
I think Let's some see. way, somehow, they're going to bring a Spider-Man into Tom Hardy's Venom. Andrew. We talked about Andrew. Exactly. That would be a perfect, because to me, yep. it, it's, yeah. Because again, like you just mentioned, uh, Chris, I don't that that version of Tom Holland and Tom Hardy just doesn't doesn't look doesn't mesh well to me in regards to just the dynamic of those two and why mm. would he hate why would he hate that version of Tom Holland? He hasn't even met that version of him, so we'll see what they do with that. But we got a second post credit scene which hasn't officially come out, but just your thoughts on this, starting with you, Chris, as we wrap up the film, which there was some pretty long credits by the way. I don't, I don't know if you guys were watching your clock. When you watch it later tonight, Michael, let us know how long those credits. I saying it, um, so I was like, I just prepared myself. So. Oh man, yeah, yeah, we uh, we talked about it on Wednesday. Sorry, yes. it's, it's, <laughs> it's fine. No, no, but I'm it, talking about like the the, the length of the time. I remember. You oh, the po- oh, gotcha, 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 gotcha. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, because I tried so hard. I don't know if you guys remember on Wednesday when when it was brought. Yeah. I was like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Doctor Strange did. trailer. It was a trailer. I felt so bad. I was like, oh my god, no, Elliot. I'm sorry. It's all gravy, but we do get the trailer. It's not official yet. It hasn't come out on YouTube or marvel yeah. but we did see dr strange into the multiverse of madness chris man um again you know how i feel about dr strange but i'm not gonna lie seeing supreme strange seeing wanda you know there's rumors of loki <laughs> there's rumors of x-men there's rumors of this that and the third what'd you think about the trailer man and are you excited for uh multiverse of madness i'm excited the trailer didn't excite me but it was a much better post credit scene than obviously venom yeah mm-hmm. very of course excited to see wanda and, I, and you know, I hate, I don't like that what if episode with with Supreme Strange. So, but I knew I was like Elliot loved that. Oh, I love so that. I was happy. I was happy for you there. <clears throat> this if this movie brings X Men, this will change my life. But yep. if not, it'll be a good movie. Hey, there's a lot of again. We talked about rumors earlier in this stream. There's a lot of rumors that some uh, some particular, and we talked about it on our one of our streams with uh, Professor X. Supposedly, maybe we'll see. Amanda, your thoughts on this trailer? Your thoughts on seeing Bear Mortal with dreads? Uh, your thoughts on seeing America Chavez? I can't think of the monster's name with the tentacles that we saw in What If, yeah. but. They're going to be in the film. Of course, Wong's in the film. And uh, there's uh, an evil version of Doctor Strange, which I th- is that Doctor Strange's what if version of that character? I, it has to be. I yeah. think so. Because why would they, why would they show exactly? it <laughs> if it's not going to be that? Um, yeah. It, it was okay. I, I don't know. I just felt like having a mini trailer as a post credit scene was an odd choice. I think we, that- they've only done it once, right? With um, Captain America and they showed the trailer for Avengers and his, uh, right. and his post credit. So they've only right. done it once. It's been a while. Yeah. It's been a while. So I just, I felt like this was a bit long and I, I didn't, not that I didn't care. It's not the word that I want to use, but it just felt like, okay, we're doing more multiverse stuff. So I think, I think we'll, we got what we wanted with No Way Home, and I think that Multiverse of Madness may be disappointing if we don't mm. get mutants, like Chris said. Yeah, something so, something big has to happen. Yeah, um, I don't think I him done, going evil is good enough, to be perfectly honest. but A different version, and maybe yeah. a more powerful version, because this Doctor Strange yeah. is weak. Chris, <laughs> who are you saying, man? No, what I would have done in lieu of the first post credit. I guess it would have to be the second at this point if, I, if it's if it's as good as I, my idea. But <laughs> I would have Ned because it's like the j- joking around with this thing would it is a perfect post credit scene what you would expect from MCU. Right. But imagine he's playing with this thing and then just in the background you just see the you just see the wheelchair just rolling oh, through the. Man. Can you imagine? Chris. You, don't, you don't even have to talk. Chris. Like, Chris. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Oh, Come yeah. on, bro. And, uh, and it's not and like he didn't have to like summon uh Professor X. He's just like, you know, like just, he's messing up stuff. Just, like, why just, is he just, yeah. just peering into another world and then and <sighs> lets the crowd know we're here, we're out here. Boy, I want it. I want it. Now. It has oh, to man. happen now. Oh, sorry. man, that, that would have been dope, Chris. That would have been dope. But uh, hopefully, we'll be seeing some professor in uh in five months but yeah, yeah post credit scenes were, were pretty interesting again spider-man 4 dr strange 2 but the last thing i want to bring well two last things and i just want a quick round stop amanda starting with you yep if someone held a gun up to your head which i hope no one ever does thank you but if they did <laughs> metaphorically speaking for this yeah. point of the, of the stream you see those two choices yep. self-defense you gotta make one you only get <clears throat> one to come 
to fruition. Tobey Maguire gets his third Spider-Man film, or I'm sorry, Andrew Garfield gets his third Spider-Man film, or uh, Tobey Maguire gets his fourth. We see the continuation of him being old man, Peter Parker, Mary Jane and him having some problems with their marriage. Rinse late. You know, he's an old man. Which one would you pick? Andrew, 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 because if we have Andrew Garfield in, like, he's older. He is older. Like, it's not like he's not, uh, he's not like in his prime anymore. He is an older version of Peter Parker. I think if he handles like Venom and Craven and, 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 uh, and Morbius as like more mature villains, um, in the <clears throat> Sony verse, I think that would be really cool to do. And also like he could even bring in miles and like mentor miles Morales in that case, because right now Tom Holland's way too young as Peter Parker. Cause now yeah, yeah. like now he's a man. So for him right. to mentor miles Morales now, I think that just doesn't, it won't click and we would have to wait yeah. till like a third movie for that to happen. I'm not saying that won't happen. Right. Um, but if we do bring Andrew in, I do think that it would be such like a great position for him to mentor Miles Morales and, and have those mature villains. As I said, I agree. Well said, well said, Amanda, uh, Chris, do you have any difference of opinion and you would rather see Tobey Maguire, uh, doing his thing a la Logan? And being, you know, oh, he's losing everything. He has to fit. I don't know who the villain would be. Uh, you know, Craven's coming. But uh, would you have rather see Tom McGuire get his fourth film? Or do you want to see Andrew get his third film? I always wanted to see Andrew for a third. I, I mean, I always liked Andrew as, like, as Spider-Man. I just love those, mm -hmm. those movies. Well, I love more one a lot more than two. But two is yeah. really good. It just has a couple of little missteps. I always like Andrew a lot. Like, I, I love him as an actor, period. Like, so, social network, all that stuff. So, like, I yeah. always wanted to see more. Then someone in the chat said, you know, maybe Toby trains Miles down the line. That's that's an interesting angle. Then awesome. you get a little bit of like Batman Beyond type of thing where that would be Ooh, cool. a great comparison. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I'm just glad that Toby was able to just do this. Like, yeah, man, this is. This I is know. This is, man. And, and I think a lot of people, we got some uh, Amazing Spider-Man 3, Amazing Spider-Man 3. Uh, this is a cruel question. Uh, but I think a lot of people, yeah, Andrew, Andrew, yeah, yeah. Yep. I think uh, a lot of people agree. And I'm, yeah. I'm right there with, I think, Andrew. That would be great to get a third film. Like Amanda said, the Venoms, the 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 uh, yep. the Miles storyline, all that stuff would make sense because he's older, he's a veteran. That that would make sense. So and and I hey I saw on Twitter you know Twitter be blowing up. One of the scoopers said yep. that apparently Andrew Garfield has said I don't know to who, but if if Marvel came to him and offered him yeah. more appearances, he would take it. He loves. But this it is so also much. the same guy for a whole year said that he wasn't in his film. So he's yeah, a yeah, liar. <laughs> <laughs> so who knows what to, to expect out of that man's mouth as far as truth. So last little topic before we wrap up, this, this stream has been awesome. Amanda, Chris, Michael, everyone in the stream, you guys are incredible. Mm -hmm. We got to wrap this thing up. It's getting a little late. One last thing, <laughs> oh boy. starting with you, Amanda. And oh, again, no. it doesn't have to be all the, but just if you want to talk about your top three, uh, top two, or if you have all the films pulled up now, if you want to rank them all, but where does the spot after this film where does this film rank for you and if you want to you can share your whole list and everyone in the chat let us know your your rankings yeah, i can do rapid fire letterbox okay. is a great app i'm gonna keep promoting letterbox because i keep everything organized um number nine is the amazing spider-man 2 i'm sorry uh eight is the amazing spider-man uh seven is spider-man 3 uh number six i have spider-man homecoming because Iron Boy Jr. just didn't sit right with me. Um, number five, I have Spider-Man 2. I know. Uh, number four, I have Far From Home, which is like an obsession of mine. I love it so much. Comfort film. Um, three, I have Into the Spider-Verse. Two, I have uh, the OG Spider-Man. And then No Way Home is number oh, one no. on my nice. list, fam. Because it's just, it brings everything together. Two decades worth of Spider-Man storytelling. So it's just, it's awesome i love it yeah i love it it's a great list it's a great Thanks. list man some some uh spider-man 2 interesting Crush. placement homecoming is in crazy yeah. I, hey, I don't like doc Ock as that's a why villain. we love amanda she always comes <laughs> with a very interesting very unique take uh Thanks. chris man again you don't have to give the full list if you want to do yeah. top top three top five whatever I'm comes try. to mind i'm gonna try to do this quickly so Two nine four, right nine. nine in order let me write this down so the worst one in my and you know worst meaning like worst you know like but not bad like not not the worst shit i ever seen in my life yeah so nine right that's nine let me write mm -hmm. nine i'm gonna put amazing two okay yeah 
And that movie's uh, uh, so <laughs> stupid. Eight. Um, I'm gonna go Spider Man three. Fair. Okay. <clears throat> um, seven. I'm gonna go. Uh, I guess. Damn, I hate to do it, but Amazing One. That's uh, that's crazy. I like that movie too. Six. But these are just good movies. Six. I'm gonna have to go. Um, Far From Home. <gasps> Far From Home. I think. Okay. Five. Five. Uh. Spider Man, one, four, Sam Raimi, okay, four, Homecoming, okay, three. What am I missing? I I want two to be into the Spider Verse. Okay, What's, okay. what am I missing? Spider Man, this, this two, Spider Man, two, from home, yeah. Oh, I'm missing Spider Man two. Yeah. Um, honestly, I'll put Spider Man two as four. Okay. And then I'll put Homecoming as three. Three. Okay. And then I'm a sucker for new shit. You know, y'all know me. And I like uh, the Spider Verse as two. And then I, the new one is one. The new new? Okay. Yeah, okay, good. No way home. The new new? No I, I will home. forgive you for the other placements. So. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> you guys have some great lists. Some great lists. I'm uh, similar to you guys in a certain extent. I think uh, Amazing Spider-Man 2. I know people love that film. It seems to be like the, the prequels for Star Wars. People have somehow <laughs> re-loved that movie. But it's bottom tier for me uh as, as far as amazing spider-man 2 number eight is amazing spider-man i i revisited all those films uh in the last few months and uh mm. I, I love andrew but and and gwen everything else in that film to me is i, I don't like lizard um I, it's, yeah i'm just not a fan of the amazing spider-man number seven for me comes in with uh, this might be a really hot take but i revisited far from home recently visually stunning mysterio's great See? But I still uh, yeah. don't think fundamentally, if I understand why Spider F- Spider Man being out of New York is like Superman being <laughs> out of Metropolis for most of the film, or Batman not being in Gotham, it just is a part of the character and the fact that we're in Europe, and it's just so like oh, goofy no. and uh, I, I, I man, just trust me, I love Far From Home when I first saw oh, it, and I was no. like, oh, I don't I feel know. the same way. It doesn't to me. It doesn't it hold like up, that. hold up as much as the as yeah the and. Oh. And, and, and and the fake uh, 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 Nick Fury and I don't know I just don't feel like this, the stakes were there. If I'm That's being fair. I'm being honest. So I know it's a hot take. I know people love it's visually great, but I, I'm not the biggest fan. That's Number fair. six for me is coming in at uh, and I actually like this film a lot more when I revisit because I laugh my ass off watching Spider Man three. Yes. Listen, <laughs> I'm not talking about uh, James Franco. I'm just talking about Harry Osborn. He was a cold. Sob in that film, Ew. I was laughing so hard when I revisited that Amanda and Chris. It was just, it was a comedy to me. And and also, I know people make fun of the whole bully Peter Parker, but it was an actual. The fact that Sam Raimi had to throw that in there, it was a pretty interesting plot with him going down that path. But it was, uh, it was, and a lot of people sleep on the fight between Goblin and Spider Man. That was a pretty dope fight. But good. that's my number six. Number five for me is uh, Spider Man, the first one. Number four is uh, I'm gonna go with Homecoming. Number three, I'm gonna go with No Way Home. Number two, uh, I'm gonna go with Spider Man Two, and then number one, Spider Verse. Nice. That is a perfect Spider Man film for me, mm-hmm. uh, in every which way. Soundtrack, um, animation style was incredible. The story was great. The heart was there. The essence of Spider Man was there, uh, and I can't wait for the sequel. So that is a perfect. None of these movies could be on TV, me. and I'm not gonna watch it. I'll put that Same out here. there as a caveat too. Except for I made Spider Man two for me. Uh, I'll watch it. I'll watch it. I'll watch it too. I know. know. Right before the end. Oh, you know what? I rewatched it and like I still I still felt it like in my soul when her neck snapped. Like it was the worst moment ever. Yeah. That was yeah. a I, I didn't yeah. tell you guys the moment of the movie that made me sad. Oh Let's yeah, it, Chris. Let's I almost it. got out of here, and I'm a, I'm a man of my word. But the moment when Peter, our Peter, is explaining the, to Ned and to MJ the plan, and when MJ says, "But I don't want that," that that took me uh, to a new level. Yeah, and I was like, "Damn, yeah. that is tough." That is so Zendaya cool. played it off well too. She's and so and good we didn't that. really talk about like the acting, but Zendaya, she was great in this film. So she was fantastic. So she was good. fantastic. Andrew, uh, Tom, Zendaya, and Willem Dafoe, Alfred Molina. Uh, everyone brought their A game, to be yeah. honest with you. All the, the live action characters, because Lizard, <laughs> that, that character wasn't all that, but everyone mm-hmm. brought their A game. But Zendaya was great. Yeah. That's why she is uh she's a fantastic actress, and I can't wait for uh, Euphoria season two. Yes, uh so Rue excited. and then the whole crew is back. But uh speaking of the crew, this crew here, and, and including Michael, who uh is, in, is watching the movie now, I think. 
this has been an awesome stream, guys. Uh, this yeah. is almost three hours of nerding out about Spider Man. What a time to be alive to be a Spider Man fan. We got movies, we got animations, we got video games, we got so much Spider Man, and it doesn't feel you know, overwhelming. It's it's a perfect amount of the, the one of the most recognizable comic book heroes of all time. So, yep. I wish uh, Henry Cavill Superman got as much love as uh, Spider Man. But um, DC, Why? we'll figure it out one day. No, they won't. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't lie to oh, people. Man. Oh man, oh man. But Amanda, starting yeah. with you again, I always appreciate you, Amanda. I can't wait to talk to you guys on Wednesday about Hawkeye. Yeah. But uh, let the people know where you at and where they can find you. Yeah, of course. Well, it's always a blast with you too. And Michael, oh my God, I can't wait for Wednesday. Hope you can come on because it's just always a blast. Literally three hours, as Elliot said, nerding out. Um, and I love it so much. And Spider Man's the Marvel hero. I don't care what anyone says, he's the GOAT best one out there um you guys can always find me over at amx nd reviews on twitter instagram and letterbox i have like my top 10 lists of the year like the best cbms all those like wrap up uh stuff come in uh, in the upcoming uh, two weeks because christmas is this friday uh which is crazy to me um sorry see clearly i don't know the days now so it's on saturday um <laughs> It doesn't matter. Every day, Spider-Man, No Way Home Day uh, if for me and everybody else. So you guys can check out my website, CandidXCinema.com. I will have some videos up just because things have slowed down for me. And uh, I just want to give those wrap ups. So, yeah, it's always a blessing. You guys have been awesome in the comments. And this has been so much fun to chat about No Way Home. Amanda, you're so right. Those top 10 lists, I got to get those uh, all so planned hard. up. It's, it's the end of the year. I forgot. It's, it's yeah. wrapping things up. But guys, Amanda, the links are in the bio. Check out her websites, her Instagrams, her Twitters, uh, her YouTube channel, all that great stuff. She is such a great person and, and an amazing content creator. So do yourself a favor and check her out. Last but not least, my main man, Chris, man. If he's not watching Legends Breaking Records, if he's not watching the next <laughs> greatest Broadway plays or just having a good old time in life, he's giving you guys fire content. And Chris, where can they find that content, my friend? HBO. Just joking. <laughs> <laughs> One day. You guys, you guys, facts, no, facts, facts, facts. <laughs> it's going to be spicy. No, um, my name is Chris Tate, and I have my channel over at Tate's Take. Big, 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 big shout out to anyone on the stream that's still watching that's ever checked out one of my videos or like left a comment or liked it or shared it. So shout out to y'all. Y'all make it cool. Um, what's next on the channel? Definitely I'm back on the insecure wave. I got to go check the episode out um, after this. But uh, yeah, I'm going to do the I'm going to do top 10 movies for the year. I don't know. If I'll, I never I haven't done shows before, but maybe I'll dabble. But definitely want to do my top 10 list the week of New Year's. So that'll be coming next week. But yeah. I've still got to get out maybe Journal for Jordan, Journal for Jordan, and then this Insecure stuff. And then I'll get you guys some top 10 if you guys are interested in the stuff that I like. So, peace. And we all are, man. And if you guys aren't, you're missing out on some great stuff, man. His links are in the bio as well. And whether it's covering Netflix, movie shows, this man is just an incredible content creator. So definitely do yourself a favor and show him some love. And uh, speaking of love, quick shout out to the Super Chat uh yo rahim thank you man you've been killing it and i've been looking at the comments some great stuff being said some some great comments from everyone but 1999 super chat thank you for that and uh for everyone for tuning in sharing liking commenting again our mm -hmm. our, our special guest michael who had to dip because he's watching spider-man again thank you amanda and chris and everyone watches on the replay you all are awesome spider-man no way home is a movie to 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 remember it's an okay. event film this is why we go to the movies ladies and gentlemen this is why we love superheroes uh and this is why marvel's doing their damn thing and uh you know continue to do so and hopefully wednesday we'll just get a perfect bow to a really good satisfying last two weeks in the mcu but for myself amanda chris and michael you all have been awesome again subscribe to all of our channels support the content you guys be safe we'll see you wednesday hawkeye spider-man daredevil kingpin elena the whole damn crew it's gonna be an hour and a half episode it's gonna be fire elena Elena coming through with the, with the mac and cheese and the sriracha. So uh, <laughs> you guys have a good night and we'll catch you on the next one.